So hey guys, this is your favorite the fanfic club, so in this video, we will see. What if Naruto become a successor of Revenge God, but before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video, now let's start. Inside a cave you could see 9 people all standing on 9 of the 10 fingers of a large statue which appeared to be made of wood. Of the 9 people who had on the fingers of the statue only 2 were physically present in the cave while that the other 7s were only holograms. In front of the 9 people you could see a red-haired boy whose entire chakra had been removed causing him to fall dead on the cold floor of the cave. The boy lying on the floor was between 17 or 18, wild red hair. His skin was palliated due to the fact that he was dead, his face showed obvious signs of insomnia, he also wears dark long pants, a red long sleeved jacket with a hem and a grey vest violaceous. This person was none other than Subaku no Gara, Godem Kei's cage of Sanagakure no Sato, former carrier of the Ichibi no Shukaku. Because Gara was the carrier of Shukaku he became the target of much hatred and contempt on the part of the people of his village, because of that Gara was raised full of hatred and resentment against humanity which had caused him an imbalance. Emotional and that he only felt alive through the killing of other people. For years he killed both people from his village and other people, many of them were due to a mission and others were just for fun or to satisfy their thirst for blood. With only 13 years Gara had feared in all his people to the point that only his older brothers accepted to be his teammates. Even though that was not by choice but by an order of his father the case cage, but even they his own brothers were afraid of him because he did not care that they were brothers he would kill them no matter what, even there were times that he had tried during a couple of missions which had caused them to move away from the, in all the senses of the word and that they never slept while on a mission with him. Fortunately for Gara and his brothers along with all the people from his village that changed when they attended the Chumin exams that were held in Konoha three years ago, in those exams the redhead had known and fought against a person who made him change it seemed so much that it made him rethink his whole life, after that fight the redhead had completely changed so that all the hatred felt by the people of his town became love. After gaining the affection and affection of his people Gara managed to become Kay's cage and led his people firmly for years, but all that had changed one day when they arrived. One day Gara had been attacked by a member of an organization called Akatsuki who was behind all nine bijus, the Akatsuki member attack had been strong and relentless but the young K's cage had defended himself with everything he had and so he could protect to his people and his people but unfortunately all of Gara's effort became useless when he was captured by Didera a former ninja of Iwagakure and one of the members of Akatsuki. After being defeated and captured by Didera Gara had been taken with him to the place where he met his companion Akasuna no. Sasori a former member of Sanagakure who had defected from the village and had joined the Akatsuki. When Sasori had been told he would have to return to his old town he had decided to break a mind control jutsu which he had placed in one of Suna's most influential. Council members, he had used Jutsu to awaken his sleeping spy and that this way it will eliminate all the ninjas that took care of the entrance of the town and all the defenses of this one so that they could enter more easily. After both successfully completed their mission they were persecuted and found by one of the two older brothers of the case cage, the boy was an extraordinary puppet named Konkuro, but unfortunately for the Sasori decided to face him and teach him a couple of tricks. The fight was short and disadvantageous for the case cage's brother, Sasori finished with him and quickly destroyed the three puppets that Konkuro possessed in a matter of seconds, the boy could not understand how it was that the man had discovered all his attack patterns and how to block them easily. Konkuro's eyes had opened when Sasori told him that he was the creator of the three puppets and many of the puppets with which Sanagakure counted and because of that he knew all the ways to use these puppets and their weak points. After easily defeating Konkuro and poisoning him, Sasori left him lying in the hot desert of Suna so that he died slowly and painfully. After his fight with the boy, the Akatsuki member decided to reunite with his partner Didera to continue his work. Inside the cave, one of the nine figures, a man who looked like a Venus flytrap plant with one side of his face darker than the other, the strange man looked at a man with spiky, disordered hair who did not, he was very far away from him. Pain Sama someone is outside the cave, he said while looking at his leader who had his eyes closed. The named Pain opened his eyes and looked at the man who had spoken before, who is Zetsu about, Kakashi's team or Meita Guy's team, 
he asked while looking at the Akatsuki spy who could infiltrate any of the five great ninja peoples easily and without anyone detecting or finding it. Zetsu looked at his leader while shaking his head, it's none of them pain sama, it's about someone different, someone who is supposed to be dead. That made everyone present in the room either physically or not turn to the strange looking man with his eyes full of curiosity. After all not every day a person supposedly dead appears in front of his door, Payne quietly looked at his spy Rinnegan eyes, the Rinnegan eyes which according to the stories and legends converted their bearer into basically a god because of their great power and the amount of skills they gave their user, it was also said that those eyes they belonged to the father of all the ninjas and the creator of all the jutsus that existed. What are you talking about Zetsu, what do you mean, someone who should be dead, explain yourself now, he said as his eyes began to shine dangerously. The brightness in the man's eyes not only showed how dangerous this was but also demonstrated the power that he had, Zetsu feared for his life since he had seen all the power that man possessed so the one that spoke quickly to avoid that the man unleashed all his power in the, it's about Naruto Uzumaki the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi. Payne's eyes opened for a fraction of a second before they were reduced and looked at his spy and informant, Naruto Uzumaki you say? He asked as he looked at the man who nodded, the same Uzumaki Naruto that is supposed to he had been killed by Sasuke Uchiha three years ago when he lost control of the Kiyubi during his fight in the Valley of the End, he asked as Zetsu nodded again. If Payne sama he agrees perfectly with the photo of the files we have of him, there is also the fact that his body was never found anywhere and it was only deduced that he died as his name disappeared from the contract of invocation of the toads that is in possession of Jiraiya, apart from that there is only the word of Kakashi Hitaki and Sasuke Uchiha who were the ones who spread the news of his death. Pain thought about what Zetsu had told him, no one had found the body or proof that the blonde was really alive or dead. There was also the fact that Zetsu was right with the invocation contract. A name just disappears from a contract when that person is killed or when the invocation decides to withdraw it on their own or when the invoker changes invocation. Without proof to affirm or deny anything he would have to give the benefit of the doubt to the man, you are right Zetsu. His body was never found and has not seen any trace of during these three years, so we will wait here and see if it is really, and if Naruto Uzumaki is really alive Yusasori and Didera will have to capture it and take it to another of our bases to be able to extract the Kiyubi, but if it is not him and this only turns out to be an imposter you will have to kill him along with all the ninjas of Konoha, he said while looking at the rock that protected the entrance of the cave. Didera and Sasori only nodded at what their leader had said. Oi, wait a minute, what do you mean, let's see if it's him really, you're really believing that the Kiyubi is alive leader Sama. Said a man with a triple-edged scythe on his back, the man's scream had caught everyone's attention and had caused more than one to turn around to see him. Next to the man who had spoken there was someone who looked at him before speaking, shut up Hidan, what Setsu says is true nobody ever found the body of the Kiyubi so it is very possible that he is alive. If you used more your brain instead of your mouth would be more useful for all of us, he said causing a man with a big sword on his back to smile in a funny way. What did you just say Kakuzu, maybe you want me to kill you and Kisame too, he said as he looked at the man with the big sword and Kakuzo who was ignoring him in a professional way. Kisame was about to say something but was silenced by Pain who looked at all of them, enough of all of you. I said we will wait here to confirm if it is the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi or not. After all there is nothing they can do, because the Shukaku was completely removed and his Jinchuriki is dead, he said as everyone nodded, during Payne's speech a man with red eyes looked towards the entrance, hoping that the person who was on the other side of the rock was really Naruto since if the blonde was really alive then his brother would not fall into the hatred that his eyes always brought when they are taken to the next level of power. In front of a large rock you could see two figures. One of them was a man with blonde hair, blue eyes, three marks similar to cat whiskers could be seen on each side of his cheeks. The man wore a black t-shirt with red lines on it, on the back it had the blood-red design of the Uzumaki clan but unlike the standard symbol it was inside a circle which was surrounded by Barrios unrecognizable symbols for anyone not familiar with that type of writing or language. The man also wore black pants and black tennis shoes with red lines. 
The second figure was of a woman, she had long hair to the middle of the thighs of crimson red, blue-green eyes, on her lips had a bit of lipstick the same color as her hair, like the blonde she she wore a black t-shirt and tight pants of the same color, on her feet she wore a dark red tennis. The man was none other than Naruto Uzumaki an ex-ninja of Konoha. Son of Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze better known as the Kiroi Senko or the Yandaimi Hokage, the boy was the same Naruto Uzumaki who was supposed to have died almost three years during a confrontation with his teammate named Sasuke Uchiha in the Valley of the End, looking at the girl next to him Naruto saw that she was looking at the rock that prevented her from entering the cave and unleashing chaos and destruction all over the, are you ready for this Rias chan Naruto asked as he looked at his wife, if as you are reading Naruto is not only alive but he was also married to the girl next to him. Rias Uzumaki formerly Gremory, the princess of destruction and the heir of the Gremory house, awarded and known by all for being one of the most beautiful creatures, her beauty was at the same level as the Archangel Gabriel and the Mao Lebiatan. Rias Uzumaki is a high-class devil, sole heir of the great Gremory family which is one of the strongest among the 72 pillars that still existed in the underworld, she and Naruto met one day when she was facing a great and powerful enemy. After the blonde saved her from being killed and eliminated the enemy they both became friends, slowly the friendship became love and both ended up getting married, if. Naruto-kun I'm ready, she said while using her family power to destroying the rock in front of her, a black sphere with red appeared on her hand proving that she was using family power. The power of destruction which eliminated and destroyed everything it touched no matter what it was, everything that was touched by this energy ended up being nothing, Everything that this power touched did not even become dust in the wind but rather it disintegrated at a molecular level. After Rias created the sphere of destruction in her hand she sent it crashing into the rock that protected the entrance, for a few seconds. The sphere and the rock seemed to fight to see which was the strongest, Naruto for his part remained calm while he was watching everything that was happening, he knew that the barrier at the entrance was a powerful barrier but he also knew that the power of destruction could be with it. After all a barrier only serves to retain a certain amount of power and when this power is too great for the barrier it will destroy itself. A few seconds later and the barrier along with the rock that protected the entrance disappeared as if it had never been there. Naruto and Rias walked slowly side by side until they reached the middle of the cave where they found the body lying and dead Gara. Naruto is a rodolo in front of his only true friend who tube before his supesta death. Gara. I regret that I could not have come before to help you but do not worry, I will make those responsible pay with their lives, he said while he raised and looked at all the members of Akatsuki in front of him, looking at each one of them he recognized a few. Looking down pain looked Naruto straight in the eyes, so it's really you, I see that you're still really alive, Kiyubi, he said looking at the blonde dressed strangely and the redhead dressed in the same way. Naruto looked at the man who had spoken, he could feel a great power within him but apparently he was suppressing him for some strange reason, a strange reason that he tried to find out. I am not the Kiyubi, in fact the Kiyubi no longer exists, he disappeared forever and they will never see him again, Naruto said while looking at the apparent leader of Akatsuki. Pain narrowed his eyes in a dangerous way as he looked at the blonde, his eyes began to shine as before but now with a little more intensity. What do you mean the Kiyubi disappeared? I asked the looking at the blonde who did not answer and just stared at him, speak, now, he demanded in an authoritative way. Naruto looked at the man in front of him, after that his gaze went to all present before speaking, first of all you do not order me and I hope that is clear to you, in the second place you should ask the Uchiha and Hatake since when they attacked me they sent me to another dimension where the chakra does not exist. My body replaced all the chakra that I had for the energy of that world so that I could survive, without chakra around it to recover the Kiyubi was eliminated from my body slowly until I ceased to exist, Naruto said while looking at the various reactions that the members of Akatsuki put, I do not know what you Akatsuki are planning to do with the Bijus but now without the Kiyubi your plans are useless now and all thanks to the ninjas of Konoha, he finished with a small smile on his face. Rias went a little closer to her husband to whisper something in her ear. Naruto-kun multiple people approach this location, they will be here within a few minutes, so I think we should hurry up and finish with all this, she whispered in the blonde's ear. 
Naruto nodded as he looked first at Rias and then at the Akatsuki members. Well, you may not have heard the lady here but she tells me that we are a little short of time and it's time to end this. But first the I will kill you too for what you did to Gara and then to each and every one of the Akatsuki members who stand in my way, he said as he watched as everyone opened their eyes when a magic circle appeared in his hands and from him came out a wooden stick. Naruto smiled as he looked at the cane in his hands. The cane was made of a special wood and it seemed that he was already a little old and fragile. Anyone who saw it would believe that the cane was about to break in any second. Didera surpassed his astonishment and laughed when he saw the weapon that the blonde would use against him. He was totally sure that with just one blow and that thing would split into several pieces. Ah ha 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 and what pieces to make with that piece of useless wood? Prick us to death with him ha 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 ha. The former Iwanin mocked as he grabbed his sides. Pain ignored Didara's laughter and stared at Naruto, he saw that the blonde had a kind of confident smile on his face as he looked at Akatsuki's blonde looking away from his lens, he looked at the ancient Iwa ninja, Didera Sasori, capture him, before the Konoha reinforcements arrive and when they capture them take it to our next base to extract the Kiyubi from the, said Pain. Hi, hi do not worry leader Sama we'll take care of him in a matter of seconds, it's not true Sasori Sempia he said as he jumped off the statue and landed a few meters from Naruto. Even I have to admit that that girl is very beautiful, maybe I will stay with her when she kills the Kiyubi and thus be able to taste my art in her hum. The smile that Naruto had on his face disappeared quickly, the blonde nape liked when someone messed with his family or his wife, the last one who tried to take it off saying that both were destined to be together the deal with the man personally, after Naruto I finish with the man he was screaming for death and he gladly granted it. From that moment everyone in the world learned never to mess with Naruto Uzumaki's wife or any member of his family. Before any Akatsuki member could even blink a powerful bolt of lightning came out of Naruto's hand and hid Didera in the chest sending him crashing into the wall of the cave. Pain was about to leave and cancel the jutsu that kept the Akatsuki present in the cave but stopped when he saw Naruto's attack. He knew that the blonde's attack was not a jutsu because he did not make any manual seal and that he did not feel any chakra in the attack, staring at the blonde he was beginning to think that he was a little right in what he was saying, looking at all the other members he saw that everyone was surprised by what the blonde had, change of plans, we have to see this, apparently the Kiyubi learned new tricks since his disappearance, they all nodded in agreement with the man while paying attention to the fight that was about to begin. Naruto walked slowly towards Didera, his gaze had changed from a relaxed to an annoyed because of what the blonde had said. You pay for that, are you sorry for what you said about my wife, he said before starting to increase speed and run towards your enemy. Naruto ran towards the knocked down Didera and when he was close he hit him in the stomach causing him to bend forward, taking him by the head the blonde inlaid his knee various times in the face of the member of Akatsuki breaking his mouth and nose. After bites Nizos but Naruto took him by the hair to see the bruised face of the ninja which was a little swollen and covered in blood due to broken lip and nose. Repeat what you said about my wife, he said as he ran towards the opposite wall with Didera taken by the hair. When he was close to the wall the Akatsuki limb embedded in front of the wall causing the face of this to be marked on the wall, after that he began to hit the man's face against the wall on several occasions, repeat what you said, repeat it, repeat it. Repeat it, repeat it, Naruto repeated as he clasped Didara's head against the wall again and again, blood could be seen on the wall where Didara's head was being shocked by the angry blonde. A metallic tail approached behind the blonde ready to kill him. But before that tail could reach him she was hit by a ball of destruction created by Rias. Sasori's eyes opened when his tail began to disintegrate slowly when the strange red ball touched her. He saw that the disintegration of the tail was approaching slowly and could reach towards him so he detached his tail before he was the next to disappear. Looking at the girl who launched the attack he saw that she was frowning as she looked at him, I'll never let you lay a finger on Naruto, he said as he threw Barius spheres more made of his power of destruction from his hands. Sasori managed to dodge a couple of them but an achievement reached him and hit him in the arm causing it to disintegrate, another hit him in his other arm, Looking forward he saw two more were approaching him, 
He knew that if one of them managed to hit him full in the chest that would be his end so without further options he did the only thing that could save his life at this time. Riaz saw how a figure came out from inside the puppet before it completely disintegrated, finally decided to face and fight like a man, it was about time, she said as she looked at the man, she had to admit that it was a bit nice but not at the level that her husband, he also saw that he had a very young face and looked like a boy no older than 15 or maybe less. On the other side of the bin Naruto kept hitting Didara's head against the wall. After a few seconds of that the blonde got completely bored and threw the body of the Akatsuki member in the middle of the cave where everyone could see better. Let's face me like a man, get up and fight, Naruto ordered. Didara managed to recover a little after the violent shake that Naruto had given him, wiping all the blood from his face and stopping the bleeding he looked at the blonde with all the hatred he could muster in his eyes which were almost closed thanks to the swelling. Naruto looked at the man's eyes and a small smile came to his face. That's it, that's the way I like it, show me your power, show me you're a man and a member of the dreaded Akatsuki organization, it's more for you to see how good I am. Hit me with one of your jutsus, he said while holding his arms, everyone who was watching the fight was beginning to think that the blonde was going crazy, letting an enemy hit you with one of his jutsu is like asking you kill, come on man do not be afraid and just do it. Didera got tired of being underestimated and mocked by Naruto so he took it out and threw one of his strongest bombs directly at Naruto's chest. B O O N N N N the bomb exploded covering everything with smoke, debris and dust. From his place pain narrowed his eyes while looking at the blonde Jinchuriki, thanks to his eyes he could see everything as clear as the day while the others were waiting for everything to be cleared to be able to see what was happening. Hajajajajaja that happens to underestimate me damn blonde. Didera said, the blonde Akatsuki turned around and was ready to join and help his partner against the girl with red hair. Really, that's the best you have, because if that's all I'm really disappointed, Naruto's voice was heard from inside the smoke which was dissipating quickly, the smoke dissipated completely showing everyone a completely unharmed Naruto, the only demonstration that a bomb had hit the blonde was the fact that almost all of his clothes were destroyed, the eyes of all the Akatsuki except pains. Opened in shock, they had never heard of a person who has survived one of Didara's bombs at least not completely unharmed or with its limbs intact. That's impossible, that must have killed him, how is it possible that he's still alive? Setsu asked her more specifically the white part of his face, even though his voice was more different from that of his black counterpart, the voice of the white part was softer than his black counterpart and this was also a little childish. Zetsu-san is right, I have personally seen the damage that Didara's bombs can create, there is no possibility that Naruto-kun could have lived on that, something must have changed him when he disappeared three years ago, said the only one carrier of the Sharingan inside the room. During all the conversation that the members of Akatsuki had among them pain just kept quiet while watching the whole situation unfold. How, how are you alive, that must have killed you? Didera said as she stepped back involuntarily, the I did not want to admit it but he was a bit scared of the blonde because he had endured one of his strongest creations, AC2 to be more specific and the only damage he had suffered was that his clothes were torn, he could feel how his body began to tremble a bit as he looked at the younger boy who smiled at him mockingly. Naruto scoffed when he saw how Akatsuki's member got a little scared of him. Really, you think something so weak and pathetic could kill me, because if so, let me tell you that I am more powerful than that and I will show you now, Naruto said while he hit his cane against the ground. From the sky fell a powerful lightning bolt that crossed the ceiling of the cave and fell on the blonde making him and the whole room light up for a few seconds, all those present had to cover their eyes to avoid being blinded by the intense light that had created the lightning bolt when it fell on Naruto. Even the holograms of those who were not physically present had to cover their eyes so as not to become blind too. When the light stopped all the Akatsuki members were shocked by Naruto's new appearance. Naruto has the same dress that Thor had when he arrived in Wakanda. Naruto's eyes went completely white as lightning bolts could be seen running between them, the staff in Naruto's hand had completely disappeared and had been replaced by an axe with the backside like a hammer. The axe had a handle of wood and some strange scriptures in it, it was also flashing like the blonde eyes, through the hole that the lightning had created, 
Everyone could see how the sky was completely clouded with many clouds of storms from which lightning and thunder were coming out. Didera could feel the electricity in all the air, he could feel how his skin tingled and that was scaring him completely for the first time in his life. He could feel the immense power that came out of the blonde, his power was so great that he put in shame the power of their leader and that was very shady because their leader had more power than a biju, something inside him told him to run and that he never looked back no matter what, the blonde gulped and reached into his bag clay, C2, Didera said as he threw an owl made of clay in Naruto's direction, the blonde pointed his axe towards the clay. Animal that was heading towards him, a powerful beam came out of the blonde's axe and completely destroyed the clay bird. Didera was surprised by how easy the blonde had destroyed his creation, jumping backward side by side with his renegade ninja companion. Sasori Senpei I think we will have to join forces to be able to kill them, especially with the blonde, he said while I watched as the blonde approached the redhead. Sasori looked at the couple and knew they had to go with everything they had if they wanted to beat them, yes, I agree with you, both are very dangerous people, he said as he took off his cloak and showed everyone his puppet body. Naruto looked at his wife straight in the eyes as he gently stroked her cheek, are you okay with love? Ria saw her husband's flashing white eyes and knew they were full of worry, for anyone who saw Naruto's eyes they would only see two large white holes with rays coming out of them but for her it was not like that, with only one look she knew when they were showing concern, sadness, hate or any other kind of emotion or feeling, she did not know how she did it but according to her she was the only one who could do it. He told her that not even his father could see any emotion in his eyes when he was in his true form, looking at the man she loved she melted under his touch, he always knew how to calm her or reassure her with just a touch of her hand, it did not matter what mood she was in. He always knew how to reassure her and make her feel better. If I'm well love, you know that someone is weak as he could never beat me, not after training by the that we passed, you also know that I am not a weak girl or a damsel in distress that needs to be protected. Naruto showed a small smile when he heard what she said, he knew that she was a rude girl and that he has always liked in a woman, he has always liked strong women who did not have to be saved even from their own shadow. I'm not doubting your strength my beloved, it's just that I do not want to see someone put a hand on you. Ria smiled, she liked that overprotective and possessive side that Naruto had about her, after he killed the man who wanted to marry her, he had made it clear that no man other than him could have her or touch her. Perhaps my beloved husband he's jealous because some worthless man has me or wants to touch me, Ria's smile widened when she saw Naruto turn his face away so she would not see his frown, she put her hand on the blonde's cheek and I force her to look at her before giving him a little kiss on the lips. You do not have to be jealous, honey, you are and you will always be the only man I love, but you know we think we should end this as quickly as possible, do you remember the people I told you? She asked making Naruto nod, well they'll be here very soon, it's only a matter of a few minutes for them to arrive, so we have to hurry. Naruto nodded and looked at the renegade ninja duo, he raised one eyebrow when he saw Sasori's true form. That's something I've never seen, a puppet controlling another puppet. At some point in life I know this is somewhat ironic, but as the lady said I have to end this quickly and it's not for offending but I do not like to be long time in this place so backward, said Naruto confusing everyone present except Rias. None of them knew what he was referring to as backward. Payne watched the transformation of the blonde and could feel the immense power that came out of him. He remained silent while watching and analyzing everything in search of a weakness or a way to beat the blonde, he knew that Sasori and Didera would not be able to beat the couple, and so I would have to find a way to beat him, although he was completely sure that if he used his Rinnegan he could beat the blonde but it was never too bad to have a plan B so if he finds his weakness he would be the work easier. The leader of Akatsuki came out of his thoughts when he heard someone talking, looking at the person who was the one he discovered was Hidan. Hidan was amazed by everything he was seeing, first a stupid bastard who is supposed to be dead appears alive, second one of his partner shows everyone that he was a kind of puppet with a will of his own, and now he was seeing the boy blonde not only survived an explosion but he had a kind of transformation which changed his body and appearance, like hell he did that. In a moment he is Kiyubi and in the other is like a kind of electric god, he said looking the blonde transformed. Kakuzu nodded in agreement for the first time with his companion, Hidan is right, 
that is something that is never seen even in all my years as shinobi, something very great he saw if he had passed the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi to have that kind of power and abilities. That's all they have to say, did any of you know about Sasori being a puppet? asked the man with the big sword on his back as he looked at the blonde which was very different from the scary brat that he and his partner had found and almost captured almost three years ago, they would have easily captured him if it were not for Jiraiya's introversion. The red-eyed man looked at his blue-haired companion, it must have been when he was Orochimaru's partner, only he would be able to do something like that. Orochimaru was a great ally even though I never completely trusted him, he helped the Akatsuki in many things but that does not mean that we will not eliminate him by betraying us, said what appeared to be the only woman in the group of men. Returned in the fight Sasori summoned all his puppets including the third K's cage while Didera created a clay bird and climbed on it, he also covered Barius of Sasori's puppets with his clay to make them explode as soon as they are near Naruto or Rias, he would make the blonde pay for what he did to her. Naruto flew up and placed himself on the two Akatsuki members, surprising them all and it was only known to two ninjas in all shinobi history who have been able to achieve that feat since the beginning of time and both shinobis belonged to the village of Iwagakure and both became cages being of the Nidame and the other the Sandame, their surprise increased more when from the back of Rias came out a pair of black wings similar to those of the bats which she used to fly and stand next to the transformed blonde. From her hands the redhead created two balls of destruction in her and threw them to her enemies. Sasori had his puppet Barius form a wall with their bodies to protect him from the strange power of the red-haired girl. He also made his favorite puppet the Sandane K's cage so that it would create a wall of iron sand. But unfortunately for the redhead of Akatsuki none of that was enough to stop the destructive power of the girl who crossed the wall of puppets and iron sand like a hot knife in butter. Taking advantage of the opening that his wife Naruto created, he threw his axe forward, destroying Barius puppets that were in his way, after throwing his axe Naruto made his hands covered with lightning which he threw forward and destroyed two clay birds, and Barius puppets but they were heading towards him, as if he had a mind of his own they all saw how Naruto's axe came back into his hand, as soon as his weapon returned to his hand the blonde lifted it into the air pointing it towards the sky. Everyone inside the cave whether they were physically present or could not hear as the sky began to thunder. Lightning and thunder began to cross the roof of the room and fall everywhere. Both Sasori and Didera had to move on several occasions to avoid being electrocuted by his blonde enemy, the only ones who were safe were the members of Akatsuki who were on the statue and the blonde and his wife, looking at their enemies Naruto smiled when a powerful bolt fell on his axe. The blonde threw that ray that had fallen on his weapon forward and destroyed everything in its path including a wall that was behind his enemies. The blonde's attack had caused his enemies to separate from each other. As soon as Didera placed his feet on the destroyed floor of the cave tube that skillfully dodged Barius' spheres of destruction thrown by the redhead and lightning and thunder falling from the sky or the blonde was throwing at them. From his hand he threw Barius pigeons made of clays which flew quickly and exploded in Naruto's face but they could not do anything, flying up he made the blonde chase him and when he saw that the blonde was about to reach the jump of the bird that had created and made it explode. Naruto growled when the impact of the explosion sent him crashing to the ground, quickly rising to avoid a puppet with a sword through his head, before he could do something said puppet disintegrated into nothing when what seemed a dark red arrow pierced through the middle of her chest. A smile came to the blonde's face when he saw Rias giving him arrows and a bow to his power, shaping his power was something he had taught her after he began to train her in her nobility. Ignoring his wife for now Naruto flew quickly to Didera who was on another bird made of clay, Moving at a speed that the renegade ninja could not follow the blonde appeared behind the man and without this realizing he hit him in the neck sending him to hit the ground. Before Didera had time to recover a powerful beam pierced his back and destroyed his heart. Naruto stared at the body of the dead Akatasuki on the ground, generating a powerful beam in his hand he threw it against the body of Didera to leave it charred and unrecognizable. After that the blonde turned around quickly and used his maid to split a puppet in two that had tried to attack him with a sword, after that he grabbed another by the arm which had a kanai in his hand, hitting the puppet Naruto caused that it would be destroyed as if it were nothing. 
Turning quickly Naruto managed to create a small electric tornado which took away a lot of the puppets that were near the cave, after a few seconds of turns Naruto stopped and looked at everything he had done, from his place he could see that only Sasori along with his puppet of the sand dame and about ten more of his. Normal puppets were still standing while all the others lay in pieces in what remained of the cave. After destroying all those puppets and killing Didera the blonde saw that Rias could take care of the other Akatsuki member alone, looking towards the other members of Akatsuki he saw that the pointed haired man was staring at him, flying slowly he approached them while sitting on a rock that jutted out from one of the walls that were still intact. Feeling a small increase in power he smiled knowing who he belonged to, looking away he saw his wife fight fiercely against Sasori, he always enjoyed seeing her in action. He always liked to see how she destroyed her enemies until there was nothing left of them, he always enjoyed how she used her ferocity to turn her enemies to dust, especially after he trained her in her nobility. The blonde looked away again from his beautiful wife towards the man with pointed hair with the Rinnegan who was looking at him without saying anything, he could see that he was analyzing and measuring his strength, he gave a smile to the man while looking straight at him his Rinnegan eyes of this. Should I assume that you are the leader? he asked as he settled himself a little on the rock where he was sitting. From the statue Ghetto Pain nodded while looking at Naruto who was smiling at him for some strange reason. That's right, my name is Pain and I am the leader of Akatsuki. Naruto's smile grew a little louder when he heard the peculiar name of the Akatsuki leader, Pain E.H., I like that name, by chance you. Knew that in another language your name means Pain, a name very appropriate for a person who hunts the Jinchurikis to extract the biju painfully I must add, but I must ask myself what are you looking for, what is your goal after you have all the bijus sealed? Naruto asked while shaking his head to avoid a spear cast of iron sand sent to him by the puppet of the previous case cage, but even so he did not take his gaze from pain. Our goal is to bring peace to the world, when we manage to gather all the bijus we will use them to create a weapon, a weapon we will use to bring pain and destruction to the whole world because only through pain people are able to join with each other, when all feel in pain all wars and conflicts will end, all will be forced to live in peace for fear that we will use our weapon in them. I see, it sounds like a good plan but you have not thought about I do not know. That when you attack all the peoples they all agree and decide to attack you. After all of you are nine against five great ninja towns. Well you will be seven because the one you call Didera is dead and your partner Sasori will be too soon, they have to pay to attack and kill my friend Gara, he said as he threw a beam from the palm of his hand which hit the puppet of the Kazakesh that flying towards him with the intention of cutting it to pieces with additional arms that had emerged, the beam sent the puppet to hit the ground but fortunately for Sasori this did not have the strength to destroy it. Pain narrowed his eyes at the blonde in front of him, Naruto had told him something he had completely ignored and it is the fact that he is right about all peoples coming together to fight against them, they can be strong but they would not survive if the five big towns are allied and decide to make a great attack together. You are right in what you say, but it is very doubtful, now there is a lot of hatred and resentment among the big five towns, there is also the fact that Kiri is currently under a civil war, Konoha still hates Suna for the attack three years ago, Iwi hates Konoha for everything the Yandaimi did during the war and Kumo does not trust any of the other towns, so alliance between them is almost impossible. Naruto still kept his smile before the man in front of him, but you said it yourself, pain unites people, how sure are you that they did not join forces against you, asked the white-eyed blonde. It is true, pain unites people, but hatred separates them, there is more chance that other peoples will attack each other instead of joining and fighting against us, even some may try to ally with us to avoid their complete destruction. They both stopped their little talk when they saw Rias hit the Sandame case cages marionette and sent her in the direction of the statue. Pain watching this he raised his hand and made the puppet stop in the air, after that Naruto heard as he mentioned some simple but powerful words while keeping the puppet frozen in the air. Shirin Tensai, he said making the puppet go back at an incredible speed. The puppet kept on its way back until it hit a wall where it was destroyed in pieces. Pain ignored the look Sasori was giving him for having destroyed his puppet. He knew that no matter how much or the ability of the puppet that Sasori used he would never get out of that cave alive. After seeing the little show Naruto gave a little applause at the power of pain, 
You must be a very powerful person to be able to do that even with your real body away from here Pain San. Pain nodded while looking at Naruto who was still with his smile on his face, I am a god, so I can do that and more, for me there is nothing impossible, Pain said with a small flash of arrogance in his voice which does not step unnoticed by Naruto. Naruto looked at Pain, the man may sound arrogant but he may be able to back up his words, not many people have the ability to use. Their powers with only a holographic projection representing them, he knew that the man could give him even a small challenge, he was wishing to be able to fight face to face against him and thus show him the power of a true god, but until that day he would settle for just talking to the man and who knows maybe get some information. Look how curious I am also a god, well, technically a demigod but it's almost the same, but there's something I want to ask you if it's possible pain san, Naruto said as he became serious again. Pain nodded giving the blonde permission to continue with his question. How do you intend to achieve your plans with a spy and forming your enemies? He asked as he looked the man directly in the eyes before deflecting him to a certain Uchiha. Pain's eyes narrowed dangerously while everyone else stopped watching the fight between the two redheads to hear what the blonde had said. What do you mean a spy informing our enemies? There is no spy in Akatsuki, Pain said seriously. Naruto looked at the man straight in the eye again, if that is true how you explain all the information that Konoha has about you. How do you explain how they learned about the kidnapping of the K's cage if Suna was put under a total confinement when all this happened? Payne's eyes opened and a little bit I looked towards one of the equines. All the members that were not fighting looked towards the Uchiha which had his eyes closed. He was also the only ninja that came from Konoha so if someone he had betrayed him with that town would be the. This is Itachi Uchiha is the only person in your organization with connections in Konoha. He is the only one who could have informed them about what was happening to T tell me that you really believed him story that he killed his entire clan to prove his new powers. Because if so, let me tell you that this is not true, he did it only because he was ordered, everything was the work of Hiruzen Serutobi Ki he gave Itachi one last mission, which was to eliminate your clan and infiltrate Akatsuki and inform all his plans and movements to the people, Naruto said while looking at the Uchiha. Itachi's eyes widened slightly as he looked at the blonde, he did not know how or when he had found out about it, only he, the Hokage and his advisors were the only ones who knew about that mission. Before anyone could ask him something the Uchiha broke his connection with all present and made his image disappear. Seeing this pain looked at Itachi's partner before speaking, Kisame I want you to catch Itachi and bring him to town, I want him alive so he can know everything he told Konoha about us, ordered pain looking at. Shark man, Kisame he nodded before his image also disappeared to fulfill his mission. While Naruto was talking comfortably with Pain Rias he used his hands to grab the sting full of Sasori's poison, showing incredible strength the redhead crashed into the ground Akatsuki, she repeated that many times until she pulled him towards her potion, when Sasori was close enough she hit him in the chest with a ball of destruction which destroyed the Akatsuki member completely. Naruto saw that and got up from the rock while cleaning his hands to remove the dust and dirt that was in it. Well now that Sasori is dead I think we ended up here. I agreed with Pain San and all of you also members of. Akatsuki, he said as he flew towards Gara's body which surprisingly remained in the same place as at the beginning despite all the destruction and chaos that had happened in the cave. Pain said while making the blonde stop in his place, why are you helping us? Asked sincerely surprised by what Naruto did. Actually it's very simple without Itachi and the Akatsuki I will not have to face all of you. To be honest I do not have any problems with you, as I said at the beginning we just killed Sasori and Didera for what they did to my friend Gara. The Kiyubi no longer exists in me so do not come from behind me and we will not have problems, if you even knowing that you decide to follow behind me I will have no choice but to kill each and every one of you, he said while his eyes they shone for a few seconds. What you saw here was only a small sample of our power, in fact I have a better idea, why do not you and I better make a deal, the blonde asked looking at the Akatsuki leader. All the members of Akatsuki stayed listening to the conversation between the proclaimed gods, even after seeing the powers of each one, it is possible that they are truly gods. A deal you say, what kind of deal do you offer, he asked while looking at the blonde. 
a very simple one where both parties will win. When you build your machine of annihilation and you decide to sow terror all over the world there are a few countries that I want you to avoid destroying. In exchange I will take care of Orochimaru and the traitor Uchiha for you. I will also provide you with a seal that will allow you to extract the bijus from their Jinchuriki without having to kill them. I may no longer be a Jinchuriki but I will not let people who suffered a miserable life for something that was beyond their reach and for human greed die, not if I can help it, he said as he went to Gara's body, putting it in his pocket Naruto took out a small piece of chess similar to those used by the devils to resurrect the dead and turn them into members of his nobility but the difference was that he had the figure of an axe equal to Naruto's, are you sure this will work? I asked looking at his wife, Rias nodded as he crossed his arms under his broad bust making them pronounce themselves more, as Ajuka-sama said yes. Since you are not a devil but a god he cannot create a set of bad pieces so that you can relive the people, that's why using your unlimited energy he could make a variation that works with your power and thus be able to revive a person and turn them into a demigod just like you. He said while looking at the piece, if everything worked as a juka he had told Naruto could revive various people with his pieces, not the same amount that a high class devil could reincarnate but if enough for a few. Naruto had what would be a queen, a knight, a tower, a bishop and a pawn, so the blonde could only revive five people and turn them into demigods like, besides, this is not the first time you use it, right? She asked as she watched him. Yes but this time the person who used it used magic like us, Gara does not use magic instead but his whole body works with chakra. And we do not know if this would work, he said while looking at the redhead. You are right but Ajuka-sama assured that this would work, besides this is not the time to doubt him or if, especially with the fact that you have known each other for many years so you, more than anyone else, should know the ability to create things. Naruto nodded knowing that Rias was right, so he took a deep breath as he bent over and put the piece on Gara's chest and recited the incantation that had been given to him so that the ritual could be fulfilled. By my name I Naruto Uzumaki God of Thunder. Son of Thor the father of everything, I invoke the soul of this man Subaku no Gara to return to his body and emerge as a new person. A new god, the god of the sand, he said making a magic circle appear from under the body of Gara. everyone present saw how the piece on the chest of the redhead sank halfway, raised his axe to the sky Naruto made a lightning strike on it, when the axe was fully loaded Naruto hit it on the piece that was on the body of Gara, causing it to sink completely into his body. Gara's eyes widened, the redhead inhaled strongly as he suddenly got up from the ground, seeing this Naruto grabbed him and placed him in a potion where he was sitting. Quiet, calm Gara breathed slowly, you just have to breathe, Naruto said as he placed his hand on his friend's chest to reassure him, Gara's breathing normalized as he looked around him a little confused and disoriented. That's it, calm everything will be fine, you just have to breathe. Gara looked at the people who were speaking to him and his eyes opened when he could recognize him despite the changes he had, na na Naruto are you, asked the unbeliever for what he was seeing, he was completely sure that Naruto was dead. Naruto nodded as he looked at his red-haired friend, if Gara is me, he replied with a small smile on his face. But that's impossible, you're supposed to be dead or maybe I died too. No Gara, none of us are dead, but I want you to rest for now, I promise I'll explain everything soon. Gara nodded as he watched as Naruto got up, the blonde looked pain straight in the eyes. So now that I see a small sample of my power that you say pain san, we have a deal. Pain thought about the blonde's proposal for a few seconds while remembering everything he had done since he arrived. He could also see and feel the great power that came out of the blonde's body, since Naruto had appeared he had shown various powers and abilities strange like the girl he says is his wife, but not only that but he and all the Akatsuki witnessed how he revived the old Ichibi Jinchuriki, an almost impossible feat for someone who did not have the Rinnegan. He was also the only one who knew about Itachi being a spy all this time. So after thinking it over he came to the conclusion that it is better for him to have the blonde as his ally than as an enemy, at least until he finds a way to kill him, I accept your treatment but if you betray me I will end your life, he said while releasing a bit of his chakra so that Naruto felt his power. The blonde smiled as he looked at the man in front of him without even a scare of his power, the same thing, said Naruto while taking out Baro's ceiling pads, 
These steps will allow you to extract the bijus from their Jinchura key without having to kill them. You only have to put one on your objectified and another where you want the chakra to be stored. To activate them you will only have to infuse a little of your chakra on both pieces of paper before beginning the process, Naruto said as he put the labels on the floor and gave the back to Pain. But before he could get very far the leader of Akatsuki stopped him. Wait, we still have something to solve before you can go, he said making Naruto turn around to see him. And what would that be Pain san, he asked looking at the man with pointed hair. We still have to solve the issue of the Kiyubi inside you, we have to extract it and seal it before you leave, he said while looking at the blonde. As I told you before, the Kaibi disappeared completely from my body along with all the chakra that I had, but if you want you can try it and you will see that there is nothing, if you want I can give you a demonstration, he said while doing Barya's hand positions for a jutsu that he knew very well, cage bunch and no jutsu, he said and nothing happened, once I told you I do not have chakra anymore. Pian looked at the blonde and with his eyes he could see that he was speaking the truth, thanks to his eyes he could see if a person had chakra in his body or not and in Naruto he could not see anything, not even a small drop of, that is a problem, without the Kiyubi chakra we will not be able to carry out our plans. I would not be so sure about that, he said, making everyone look at him confused, so you can see that I support your plan and as an act of good faith I will tell you how and where you can get a large part of the Kiyubi chakra, it is not as big as the one I had but it will be very useful for your plans, he said, calling everyone's attention, especially pains. A lot of Kaibi chakra, he repeated making Naruto nod, where, I ask. Inside the temple of fire there is a boy named Sora who has a small portion of the Kaibi chakra which was sealed in it by his father when he was a child. Another part is inside the bodies of the brothers Ginkaku and Kinkaku who were swallowed and spit by the Kaibi after they started eating it from within, and finally in Konoha is the largest fragment of the chakra and that is in the grave of the Yandaimi Hokage Minato Namikaze, also next to his body is find a parchment where you can find a small part of the Kaibi chakra that belonged to Mito Uzumaki-sama. He said amazing everyone with the fact that there was more source of the Kiyubi chakra than the one that had previously in the body of the blonde, if you manage to put them all together then you will have a very good portion of the Kiyubi chakra and it may even be enough for you to be enough for your plan. Pain narrowed his eyes suspiciously at his new ally, how do you know about all this, he asked the question that was on the minds of all the Akatsuki members who were on the statue. Let's say that information was given to me by a very reliable source, he said before turning around and walking back to his friend and his wife but as soon as he did he stopped quickly and came back talking, oh and one more thing. The grave of the brothers gold and silver is located 200 meters south of the entrance of Kumogakure. Just where is your ninja academy so to be able to remove them you will have to destroy this place. And to be able to remove the chakra from their dead bodies they will have to use these stamps and your rinnegan, do not ask me how I know the skills that your eyes possess, after saying that and dropping the seals on the floor and turned again and started walking towards the people who were waiting for them, see you later Pain San and you also Conan, Zetsu, Hidan, Kakuzo and you also Tobi, Naruto said as he surprised everyone with the fact that he knew their names, but nobody was more surprised. I mean that when Pain heard that Naruto knew about Tobi, nobody apart from him, Conan and Zetsu, knew who Tobi was and much less wise who he really was, maybe he and Naruto are allies for now but he would not stop investigating the blonde and devise a plan in case you have to eliminate it, with all your work done. Pain made all the holograms of its members disappear, after everyone left, cancelled the jutsu with which he kept the ghetto statue in the cave, after that he disappeared from the cave, he would then send Zetsu to pick up the tags that Naruto had brought. Naruto approached Gara and helped him to get up off the floor, come on Gara, we have to get out of here, he said as he hooked Gara's right arm over his shoulder to help him walk until he fully recovered. Rias did the same with the left arm, Gara looked at the girl which smiled warmly, he gave a confused look to the blonde who all he did was smile before speaking to introduce his wife to his friend. Gara introduce you to Rias Uzumaki my wife, Rias Chan I present to Gara the only true friend I had in this world. Rias smiled at the redhead, it's a pleasure to meet you formally Gara San Naruto kun has told me a lot about you. The pleasure is all mine Uzumaki San, 
said Gara in his voice a little weak and a bit exhausted. Rias shook her head as she looked at him. Please call me Rias only, any friend of Naruto-kun is a friend of mine. It's okay Rias-san, he said as he looked at her, she was about to say something but was interrupted by Naruto who was shaking his head with a smile on his face. Do not bother Rias-chan, it took me a while to get him to call me by my name, you just let him go by now, he'll get used to it later, he said as he watched as she nodded as they left completely from what was left of the cave. Naruto what happened with your eyes because they are like that, he asked as he watched Naruto's flashing white eyes. Ha this, this is an effect of being the god of thunder, he said as his eyes returned to normal for a few seconds before returning to his true form. What do you mean, you're the god of thunder, and how is it that you're alive, and what was that about making a deal with the Akatsuki leader? I know you have many questions Gara, and I promise I'll answer all of them when we get to Suna but for now rest because we have a long trip to your town, Gara nodded, as Naruto had told him he had many questions for the blonde but the I would wait until I reached Suna to be able to do them, for now he would just concentrate on leaving this place as quickly as possible. Rias looked at her husband while frowning a little, Naruto-kun are already here. If I lose, he said as he watched as nine people landed in front of them, and look what we have here, the great and powerful ninjas of Konohagakure no Sato, Naruto said sarcastically as he looked at the people who had arrived. The eyes of everyone who had come opened when they recognized the person in front of them. It's this is impossible you should be dead, I saw you die, Kakashi said surprised while looking at his former student. You wanted to say when you killed me Hitaki, but unfortunately for you I'm still alive and stronger than ever. What do you mean you killed Naruto, assume that you died when the Kiyubi took over your body and attacked both Sasuke Uchiha as Hitaki Kakashi or that was what informed all allies of Konoha? Gara said while looking at his friend, his only true friend. So that was the lie I told them all the truth is Gara that when I beat Sasuke in the Valley of the End I was bound by the sword Kakashi. He and Sasuke tried to kill me and out of my body than ever they will find me but unfortunately for them I am still alive and with a lot of desire for revenge, he said while his eyes became whiter than before. All ninjas of Konoha were surprised when Naruto's eyes and white rays got started out of them and the whole body of the blonde, the axe in his hand was also generating rays shot out in multiple directions. Sakura saw this pursed the man as he looked at his old village partner with much disgust and displeasure. My mother was always right about you Naruto you are just a demon, a demon that should never have been born, I speak in pink hair animal while looking at the blonde. You a god, do not make me laugh Dobi, you're just a garbage with no family and no clan which should have died three years ago, Sasuge said arrogantly while looking at the blonde in front of him, he could not feel the immense power that came out of the blonde since its level was not enough to detect the power of a god. Sasuke 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 Naruto said while shaking his head, I see you are still with your big sandwich but do not worry, after I finish with your brother I will continue with you. That angers the only survivor of the Uchiha massacre. Sasuke activates his Sharingan while creating a Chidori in his left hand. The Uchiha ran towards Naruto with the intention of killing him again for what he had said. Naruto released his hand holding Gara, and to everyone's surprise and horror he stopped Sasuke's Chidori with his bare hand as if it was nothing. Sasuke's eyes widened when he saw this, while Naruto just smiled at the face that put the black-haired, Sasuke, you dare to attack the god of thunder with its own element, he said as he folded his hand to Sasuke making the Chidori in his hand disappear. And that this knee while screaming in pain, Naruto turned his axe and hit Sasuke with the side of the hammer in his chest. Sasuke went flying and hit a wall of the small cliff where they were. Sakura's eyes widened when she saw her god fly away as if it were nothing. Sasuke-kun, she shouted as she ran towards him to help him. Naruto surprised everyone even more when he appeared in front of Sakura and took her by the throat, shut up bitch. I cannot stand to hear your annoying voice. Naruto said as he buried Sakura in the water of the small river where they were. Naruto jumped back to avoid a kick from Guy, the blonde turned quickly and caught the leg of Rock Lee with his bare hand, the boy with a bowl hairstyle had tried to attack the blonde by the sword after his master thought that this had lowered the guard, 
You know I remember that before you wanted to be the best specialist in taijutsu that has existed in the whole world, not Rock Lee, said the blonde as he slowly raised his axe, Lee's eyes opened when Naruto's axe was covered with rays. The ninja of Konoha tried to liberalize his leg when he saw the intentions that the blonde had but could not free his leg since he had it was strongly held. Naruto quickly lowered his axe and cut Lee's leg at knee level, the cut was clean and bloodless because the axe's electricity cauterized the wound quickly. Rock Lee fell into the water while screaming in pain and grabbing what was left of his mutilated leg. Lee, Guy shouted as he looked at his precious student on the floor while he grabbed what was left of his leg mutilated by the blonde who was laughing at the boy's suffering while he still had half his leg cut in his hands. Naruto you will pay for this he shouted as he launched himself against the blonde. Naruto heard Guy's scream of rage, turning he saw that the green beast was running towards him full of fury and hatred which only made his smile increase and a cold look on his face, when Guy was close enough to him. I throw the severed leg of Rock Lee, Guy. Stopped quickly while catching the cut leg of his student. Suddenly a shadow grew over him, looking up he saw how Naruto appeared above him with his axe raised in the air. Naruto under his gun shaded the head of Guy making the head of this explode and spread all its contents in the water, after that the blonde generated a lightning in his hand and used it to carbonize the body of man before this street to water is nothing more than a piece of human coal. Ninpo, Choju Giga, looking to the right Naruto saw how two lions made of what looked like ink were coming towards him quickly, the blonde I hope they were close enough, snapped his fingers and a lightning bolt fell on them destroying them easily. Raiden. Raiju Suiga. A huge dog made of chakra fell on the blonde but this did not cause any harm or if you want a discomfort, Kakashi's eyes were opened when he saw that his jutsu had not affected his former student, making Baria's hand positions he threw his next jutsu, Raiden. Biakurai, he said and a white lightning bolt came out of his hand as if it were an arrow which was heading towards Naruto's heart. Naruto looked at Kakashi while shaking his head, sighing in disappointment. He decided to speak, the Konoha ninjas never learn the truth, I will teach them what the true power of lightning is. Naruto said as he started to run, after a couple of meters he jumped as high as he could. The sky darkened completely, lightning and thunder were heard everywhere. Naruto's eyes shine much more than before and his axe began to release a lot of rays from her. After a few seconds in the air the blonde descended from the sky and hit his axe on the ground causing everything around him to be destroyed, that still remained of the cave of the Akatsuki heading, the ground around them shuddered violently, all the water that was in the small river had disappeared by full, a powerful bolt of lightning fell on Kakashi's body causing him to be buried under a rubble but still alive. Naruto smiled as he watched all the destruction around him, all that was once a beautiful cave with a small waterfall and a crystal clear. Lake was now just a pile of rubble and dirty water. Anyone who saw the place would think that there was a great battle between two ninja armies and not caused by a single person. Naruto's smile only widened when he saw that all the Konoha ninjas were alive, while well everyone except Guy whose body had completely disappeared, since he had been betrayed and almost killed by Kakashi he had acquired a huge hatred for the ninjas, due to his deceptive and treacherous attitude, the only ninjas he endured were Gara and his brothers together with a few others, because of that he agreed with the pain plan. Naruto blocked the sword of a dark-haired boy who reminded him a lot of Sasuke, he also recognized him as the one who had created the ink animals, both engaged in a struggle of force to see who dominated the other, for Naruto the strength that the boy was playing on him, he was hitting a pillow against a rhinoceros, he was just doing this to have fun with the black-haired boy, and you are who, my replacement, I asked the boy who gave him a fake smile. Hi, my name is Sai but unlike you and Sasuke I do have a penis, he said while keeping his fake smile present and trying to dominate the blonde. Naruto raised one of his eyebrows at the boy's comment, on what do you rely on to say that I do not have a penis, the last time I checked if I had one and one very big if you want you can ask my wife to come up, Naruto said while looking at the black haired boy. Then she must be stupid to get ugly to marry a man without a penis like you. Naruto looked at the boy who still struggles to master him at the level of strength which would be impossible because he was not at the same level as, you know I had no intention of killing you but now with what you said about my wife I cannot forgive you, 
Sai did not have a chance to do anything but open his eyes in shock when Naruto's hand went through his chest. Naruto removed his hand from the boy's chest as he let his body fall to the ground, the god of. Thunder looked at Sai's heart in his hand before crushing it and dropping it to the ground next to the body of the boy. Raised his axe he destroyed the head of the dead boy before generating a lightning in his hand and carbonizing the body. Then who is still, he asked but did not receive nobody's answer, all of them just stared wide-eyed at everything he had done. Seeing that nobody wanted to face him, the blonde decided to finish with everything. Taking a last look at everything he had done he nodded to himself before looking at Kakashi which had come out under all the rubble in which he buried him. He was almost completely unharmed with just a few pieces of clothing and clothes a bit torn, I already have to go Kakashi but before I leave I want you to deliver a message from me to your I have cage, he said making the man look at him, Kakashi, tell the old witch that god of the thunder will come to Konoha to sow chaos destruction and death throughout the town and that I will finish what the Kiyubi began. With that said Naruto flew along with his wife in the direction of Sanagakure no Sato. Chiyo, Neji and Tenten stared at all the destruction that Naruto had caused, still trying to process him as he was able to do all that, none of the three had the courage to face the powerful blonde who called himself a god, but after having seen all the power of Naruto they were beginning to believe that his words were true. Descending slowly Naruto, Rias and Gara landed about 200 meters from the entrance of Sanagakure and decided to walk from there to the village of Sunagakure. They decided to do that for three reasons, one was because Gara had regained enough strength to be able to walk on his own. The second reason was because neither Naruto nor his wife wanted the people of the village to see them flying which could cause them to be frightened and decide to attack them thinking that they were the enemy. And regardless of whether Gara was their friend Naruto would not allow anyone to hurt his wife because if that happened to him he would have no choice but to destroy the whole village and even Gara if he came to get in his way, the last of the reasons and the most important of all is because Naruto really hates most people in this dimension because of his short understanding of things. Anything that was out of their understanding or out of their understanding they labeled as being wrong and that was something that should not exist. Very unlike the humans of the dimension where he lives now, since this is less intolerant and less stupid than those who lived in the shinobi dimension, they are also more mentally developed and more understanding about things, since most preferred to seek an explanation of things before judging them. After landing in the hot desert that was Sanagakure Naruto decided to seal his powers almost completely and thus returned to his sealed form which was the way he wanted to appear before the brother and sister of Gara and avoid problems with them or any other people within the village. So after he seals his powers and Rias also sealed hers the three of them walked slowly until they reached Suna's only entrance where they ran into Gara's brothers who had a few hundred heavily armed ninjas behind them, apparently as reinforcements for the Konoha ninjas, but as soon as they saw everything they quickly stopped when they saw that their leader was back home safe and sound. Jigara, Tamari said surprised as she looked at her younger brother, running towards him she hugged him. Tightly with fear that he could escape if she released him from his arms. Gara are alive, thank you goodbye that you are alive, she said without knowing that in truth thanks to a god is that he was alive again. But since you are here, I thought that the Akatsuki had captured you, as you achieved escape, she asked, she did not notice the small frown on Rhea's face when she mentioned the man, it seems that even in another dimension she still felt the effects of mentioning the name of that powerful being. I'm fine Tamari so do not worry, he said looking at his older sister, and to answer your question I did not escape, but they saved me, he said while pointing to the blonde and the redhead, if Tamari was surprised to see her brother alive when she recognized Naruto she almost died of a heart attack her eyes widened in shock and surprise. Releasing the redhead she ran to Naruto and hugged him tightly. Even stronger than his own brother, like a dam overflowed tears began to fall freely down his face and without being stopped all his tears ended in Naruto's right shoulder. The god of thunder only smiled as he returned the hug to Tamari. Raising his hand he began to pass it through the head of this in a comforting way as he did to Rias when he was somewhat depressed or just when they were alone in his house. He also sometimes did the same to the tower of his wife who was almost always stuck to him for his quality and imposing aura. After a few seconds of crying silently on the blonde Temari's shoulder I looked directly into his blue eyes before speaking. Naruto-kun, 
I thought you were dead. After we returned from helping the others Kakashi came back with the Uchiha and informed everyone that you had died during your fight with Sasuke-san. He said unable to stop the tears that went down his face. Now come to Mari-chan do not cry, all that was a lie invented by Kakashi, the god of the Asgardian thunder spoke while looking at. Soon as Kunuichi, then I will explain everything to you in more detail, he said while making her look at the eyes, also do not cry, a girl as. Beautiful as you should never cry, he said while wiping the tears. From his eyes which miraculously stopped, Tamari blushed a little when Naruto called her beautiful. She also felt an electric current running all over her body when the blonde placed his hands on his face. Looking aside she stared at the girl who was accompanying Naruto and his brother Gara. She had to admit that the girl was beautiful, with a nice skin and with her cute and long red hair, she felt a little jealous for the good figure that the girl had, she always wanted to have a figure like hers but she could never achieve it, especially with her being a kunuichi, she could not afford to look weak before her male companions but even so she could not help but envy the attractive figure of the red-haired girl. Her beauty only increased by her big and striking blue eyes. Ardoso Naruto saw how Tamari was seeing Rias and could not help but smile mentally, no matter where she went Rias always becomes the center of attention of both men and women, wherever the redhead stepped on she always attracted all eyes towards her, it did not matter if it was in the earthly world or in the human world and apparently now in other dimensions its beauty continues to capture everyone's attention. Smiling a little more widely he spoke as he looked at everyone present in front of him. Tamari Chan, Konkuro San, let me introduce Ria Suzumaki, my wife and the future mother of my children, he said with a small smile full of love and pride. Tamari could feel her heart breaking into several pieces when she heard what Naruto had said, she took a couple of steps back and managed to get away from the blonde and the redhead a little. You, are you married? she asked and immediately Naruto nodded affirmatively. I'm happy for you and I hope you both are very happy together, he said as he looked away so Naruto did not see the tears they wanted she had been in love with Naruto since the first time she saw him in the Chunin exams, that love intensified even more when she saw him fighting Gara without any fear of the Gara or the beast in which he had at that moment, the love she felt for Naruto increased further when he managed to get Gara out of the endless darkness he was in. Three years ago she had planned to declare his love for the blonde after he returns from the mission of the Uchiha, but she never had the chance since he had died during that mission, for a long time she felt devastated by the death of the blonde, she even blamed herself for the death of this since I wanted to go to her aid but for her to be helping the Nara she could not go to help him, for months she cried while telling herself that she should have left the Nara alone and go to the help of the man she loved. But now after three years she discovers that he is not only alive but also now he was married to the redhead next to him, the knowledge that had caused him much more damage than the knowledge that he was dead, now that she saw that he was married. She knew that he had lost his chance and that he had also lost the man she loved forever, for a second, for a second she thought that the reason why the blonde was still alive and back was due to the fact that fate wanted them together so that both of them were happy, that was what she thought, that was what she wanted to believe, but unfortunately for her that fantasy of a happy and happy life with the blonde could never happen now that he was married to the redhead. Without knowing the conflict of emotions that his sister was going through or what was going through the head of this conqueror stepped forward of all the ninjas that were present and look at Naruto and the beautiful redhead who accompanied him. I'm really glad that Gara is safe and that you are alive and married Naruto but what happened to the Konoha ninjas who were in rescue of Gara and the members of Akatsuki who kidnapped him? I asked before turning his gaze to the three in front of him. Naruto looked at Konkuro with a small smile on his face. Well let's say that the Konoha ninjas had a small mishap with a very dangerous and very powerful person, and for which I believe that they will have to return to Konoha in order to bury their dead in. Heal their wounded, as regards the Akatsuki they will never be a nuisance to Gara or anyone else. Konkuro's eyes widened in shock when he heard what the blonde said in front of him, he could not believe what he had hate. No, he refused to believe what he had heard about what had happened to the Konoha ninjas who are supposed to be the strongest in the world. Wait, wait a second, did you say dead and wounded? The puppeteer asked a little alarmed as he looked at the blonde. Naruto nodded as he looked at the boy with war paint on his face, 
even though most people said that he was Temeri's makeup that he put on his face. Yes, do you happen to remember or meet a pale boy with a certain resemblance to Sasuke? I asked and the puppeteer nodded. Well the poor guy was pierced through the chest and they took out his heart which caused him to die immediately, the sadness was clearly heard in the voice of the blonde Uzumaki. Poor boy, it was seen that he had a lot of talent as a ninja and that the she was a very good person, he said while shaking his head sadly, but the truth was that he was trying to suppress the cruel smile that wanted to appear on his face. Looking at Konkuro he continued with his story. Another one who was killed was Maida Guy, the poor man went from being the green beast of Konoha to the black beast because the person he was fighting with was as cold as if he were some kind of fish and left him more black than the coal used in a barbecue grill, but not before exploiting the poor man's head as if it were a watermelon, he said. Of all present Rias was the only one who could see the cruel smile on her husband's face and the happiness that he wanted to disguise with sadness as he remembered everything he had done to all the Konoha ninjas before. She knew very well that if he kept telling what had happened he would end up laughing which could betray him with his friend's brothers that he was the one who killed Konoha's scum, not that she cared or cared what Gara and his brothers they would think of her or Naruto, but apparently her husband trusted them a little so she would give him the benefit of the doubt, at least for now. Wringing her throat, she called everyone's attention to her. As Naruto-kun was saying both the pale boy and Maida-san were killed by their enemy while the boy you call the second beast of Konoha Rock Lee had his right leg cut off, while the girl named Sakura Haruno, Kakashi Hitaki the ninja who copied and the last Uchiha of Konoha were slightly injured after fighting the man who was also a member of Akatsuki, she said while feigning a bit of sadness and sorrow for the Konoha ninjas. She would hate to lie to her friends, but none of the people in front of her were her friends. They were not even known, to her they were only acquaintances of her husband and nothing else. Konkuro was alarmed to hear that, he could not believe that the ninjas of Konoha, the strongest ninjas of all the ninja villages would come out so badly hurt during a fight against the members of Akatsuki, hearing that forced him to wonder how strong indeed it was the Akatsuki and how strong Naruto and his wife were who according to Gara were what saved him, but forgetting that for now he focused on what really mattered right now. So if that's true we have to go and help them as quickly as possible, after all they are our allies, Konkuro said worried and ready to go out and help his only allies. No, we will not help Konoha in this, they looked for it on their own so we will let them carry their problem, said Gara firmly, everyone was surprised that Gara said something like that after all that Konoha had done for them over the years, they even forgave them after their betrayal and for them to unite with Orochimaru to destroy them. B but Gara they are our allies, they came from Konoha just to help us, if it were not for them I would be dead right now, the puppeteer said as he looked at his younger brother. But nothing Konkuro, I am your cage and you, whatever I order, we are clear, Gara said firmly as he looked at his brother who cowered a little when all the sand around him began to move violently. So if you or any other shinobi of this cell in Konoha's help that will be taken as an act of betrayal which is punishable by death. And do not think for a second Konkuro that just because you and I are brothers I will not execute you let me tell you that you are wrong, because if you disobey my orders I will kill you understood, he said using the same tone of voice he used before his first fight against Naruto, a voice note that scared everyone present who reminded the homicidal madman that it was his cage before he changed for the better. If case cage sama, Konkuro said submissively and fearfully for his life, he did not like to admit it but he was still afraid of his younger brother, the years that this step mentally torturing him and threatening him with death had constantly caused him to be very afraid of this. Seeing that Konkuro had complied with his order, he looked at all present. Well now I want all the ninjas to reinitiate the guard throughout the village, no one enters or leaves the village without my permission either Suna or Konoha is clear, he said receiving a high case cage sama from all those present who were they went to fulfill the order of their leader. After all his ninjas left, the case cage looked at his brother and sister. Konkuro and Tamari will accompany me and Naruto has things to talk to us in private. The brothers nodded as they followed Gara to the case cage tower, when they reached the office Gara made all the Anbus leave and left them alone, placing his hand on his desk the act of a seal of silence so that the five could have a little more privacy, after that the case keg sat in his seat while watching Naruto with his brother and sister behind him.
Now Naruto I want you to explain to me what really happened three years ago and where you have been all this time, he asked seriously. Naruto sat in one of the two chairs that were in Gara's office which were facing him while Rias preferred to sit in a more comfortable place so she sat on his legs. Tamari saw this and quickly turned his gaze towards on the other hand, just seeing that made her heart ache. Every time she looked at Rias and how happy it was with Naruto that she felt bad, especially since she wanted to be the one sitting with Naruto of that shape. Naruto raised his head a little over his wife's shoulder so he could look at the brothers in the sand. Well before I start Gare you should know that I am not a normal person, in fact neither Rias chan nor I are normal, since she is a demon and while I am a demigod, he said while the three of them they looked as if he were crazy. For a couple of seconds nobody said anything until Konkuro burst into a small laugh that was heard throughout the room. Ajahahaha Naruto seriously you want us to believe that you are a demigod and your wife is a demon? Konkuro's laughter increased a little more when he saw Naruto nodding. Please Naruto do not be so funny, that's so silly you think we are to believe a lie like that, apparently being married is affecting your head a lot, he said while looking at the blonde behind the redhead. Naruto looked at Konkuro calmly. You must know Konkuro that I am telling you the whole truth, in fact Gara can give you faith and testimony that what I am saying in the truth since he witnessed firsthand, or case you will say Gara that nothing of what you saw it was real, that you did not see my wife's beautiful wings, he said while looking at Gara who nodded. Looking at his older brother Gara spoke. Naruto is telling the truth Konkuro. I myself witnessed how from the back of Rias San came out a pair of black wings and how Naruto could fly through the air without any problem, in fact thanks to them and what they are is that I am here alive now. Konkuro looked at his younger brother before speaking. You must be joking Gara, or really really want us to believe that Naruto can fly and that she has wings, he said as he pointed to the redhead in Naruto's legs. Everything is true Konkuro, I myself witnessed all that repeated the case cage as he began to get a little upset. I do not know what happened to you when you were kidnapped by Akatsuki Gara per. Konkuro was immediately silent when a pair of bat wings came out of the redhead's back. Rias flapped her wings a couple of times so that the boy in front of her could see that they were real wings and not an illusion, even Tamari was surprised and scared a little when she saw the big black wings of the girl. Seeing the reaction of Konkuro and Tamari caused a smile to appear on Naruto's face, he did not know why but he always liked the wings that the devils had, but of all the wings he had seen in all his life the ones he loved most were those of his wife, his smile widened when he saw Konkuro's surprised and shocked face. Now you believe me, Konkuro? asked the blonde, the dark-haired only nodded his head, still surprised by what he was seeing. Well now I will tell you what really happened three years ago and where I was all this time but for that I need none of you to interrupt me, not until it is over we are clear, he asked causing everything to nod. Raising his right hand he covered it with a small beam before placing it on Rias's back. The redhead gave a little pleasure when she felt the electricity running through her wings, making them disappear she turned to see the smiling blonde behind her. You are a very naughty boy Naruto. Kun, she said with a sensual smile on her face, turning completely she sat strapped on the legs of the blonde, taking from the cheeks she caused him to kiss her. The kiss that both were sharing was so passionate that they both forgot where they were, using their arms the blonde began to take off his wife's clothes but both stopped and returned to reality when they heard a person coughing behind them. Turning his head Rias frowned when she saw that Konkuro's face was completely red and a wicked smile on his face that reminded him of his only peon, while for another Tamari had looked away again while clenching his fists tightly. Looking at her husband again, she spoke, Then we'll finish this Naruto-kun and I'll make sure you pay for that, she said in a sensual and flirtatious cough before fixing her clothes a little and turning her gaze back to Gara. Sorry for that Gara-san. What happens is that Naruto-kun tends to lose control when he sees my wings, she said making Suna's redhead raise one eyebrow as he looked at the blonde with a questioning look. Naruto looked and saw Gara's gaze and all he did was shrug. What can I tell you, Rias chan is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life and everything about her I love, of course that includes her sensual and exotic black wings, he said just to see how everyone was staying staring at him, coughing a little in his. Hands he changed his attitude to a more serious one which surprised the brothers of the arena since they never saw the blonde with such a saria look like that. 
Well, going back to the subject that matters, I was about to tell you where I was these three years, so let me tell you that it all started three years ago after my fight with Sasuke in the Valley of the End, he said as he began to tell him what he was doing, happened three years ago. FLASHBAK what is now known as the Valley of the End was once a large and crystalline river that was almost at the end of the borders of the Country of Fire. A place that was formed in what is now thanks to a great and intense fight between Madara Uchiha against Hashirama Senju. A fight that was so big and so destructive that it destroyed the whole landscape and made it what it is now, even after so many years of that fight it is still remembered as the biggest fight in the whole ninja story where they faced two shinobis with incredible powers which no one could have equal or overcome, two shinobis that at the time were considered gods by their great power. So to immortalize both shinobi Konoha decided to create two statues in honor of them, statues that had endured great storms and great battles so far. What was once a beautiful and glorious landscape with two imposing statues was now only a great disaster, due to the piles of rocks, debris and destruction that were everywhere, including the great waterfall that formed after the fight of Madara and Hashirama had now expanded a little more making the water end up drifting through the wrong places, and all thanks to the fight that Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha had. Whoever saw all the destruction that the place had would think that all this was caused by two Junin or cage level ninjas and not by two geniuses with less than a year of leaving the academy, two genins that despite being genins had incredible power within them. What began as a simple fight between genins quickly became a fierce battle where both showed the best of their ability and their best jutsus in that case the Uchiha was the winner since Naruto only. New two jutsus, the Rasengan and the Cage Bunshin no jutsu since his beloved sensei never cared to show him anything other than the basics. Since he only focused on Sasuke and sometimes on Sakura to whom he taught some things about genjutsus, but he never taught him anything important, not even after knowing that the blonde would face the prodigy known as Neji Hayuga who almost killed a member of his own family during the preliminary fights in the second Chunin exam, not even after knowing that Kakashi decided to teach him something that could be useful for him. To be able to beat the boy or at least something that would help him defend himself against it, but even with all the disadvantage Naruto showed that he was very strong which was completely clear when he could beat Sasuke Uchiha who graduated as Rookie of the Year, of course he had received two Chidoris in the chest which would have killed him if he had he was a normal person like everyone else, but for his luck he had something that no one else besides the tapeworm, the Kiyubi Chakra. No matter how much he hated the fox inside he could not deny that this had been a curse and a blessing for him, on the one hand was the fact that the Kaibi was one of the main causes of his problems since his childhood, all the blows, mistreatment, looks full of hatred and curses were for the Kiyubi. But on the other side of the coin was the fact that the same fox had been a blessing because without him he had died in his first real fight, he was not a fool, he was posing as one, he knew very well that it was only thanks to the fox that he did not die by the poison of the demon brothers of Kirigakure or in his fight against Orochimaru in the exams or even in the same fight against Neji. Regardless of whether he wanted to admit it or not, he could not deny the fact that the fox was the only reason why he was still alive and Sasuke had shown him exactly that when he went through his chest on two occasions and even with all that he could continue breathing and standing. In conclusion, the Kiyubi was a cursed luck coin and a double-edged sword for him and his enemies. So while Sasuke used the cursed seal of Orochimaru in his shell he used the Kiyubi chakra to match the Uchiha's natural ability and overwhelm him with the incredible power of the fox, which the achievement, after almost an hour of fighting, both decided to finish all using one last jutsu, so Naruto decided to use the famous N. Powerful Rasengan which was his only jutsu with good offensive power while Sasuke used loud and deadly Chidori. The clash of both jutsus caused widespread destruction that was already in the Valley of the End which was very shady due to the fact that the perpetrators were two children under 15 years old. During the clash of both jutsu Naruto case all the power of the Kiyubi that he could handle and sent him directly to his Rasengan to give him more power, while Sasuke on his part did the same using his damn seal doing so power both justice will increase to a level of power which even closers could not bring. When the shock of both S-level techniques came to an end, 
On the floor the loser was lying unconscious while the winner was standing next to it, but that was for just a few seconds before he also fell to the ground exhausted by all the chakra he had used during the fight. Naruto could not help but be very happy and happy, even with the beating he had received at the hands of Sasuke he was happy and it was no wonder since he had just beaten the rookie of the year, the last Uchiha left in Konoha, the boy prodigy who had everything on a silver platter, he also managed to avoid escaping to a renegade ninja and an enemy of his people. His people, now that he thought about it, his smile increased more because finally he would get all the respect and recognition he deserved the respect that he craved since he was very small. The blonde, despite being completely hurt, was walking towards Konoha with his semi-conscious partner Sasuke on his back which only caused the wounds and lessons he had gained during the fight to worsen, and although his injuries were almost completely healed thanks to the Kyubi's chakra he could still feel the pain of these, and to make matters worse they had been raining for a long time which caused him to stumble and fall to the ground constantly. In itself, Naruto Uzumaki had a long way to go to get to Konohagakure no Sato with his partner Sasuke Uchiha at a cost. While walking Naruto stumbled again and fell face down to the ground which caused his partner Sasuke to fall at his side, suddenly a shadow fell on top of him, so he looked up and smiled a little when he saw his sensei Kakashi in front of. Kakashi sensei achieve it, I managed to prevent Sasuke escape with Orochimaru, I fulfilled the mission successfully said the blonde with a happy smile on his face, he stared at his sensei hoping that he congratulated him for his good work he wanted his sensei to congratulate him and praise him for everything he had done to save his companion. Ignoring all the screams of his body so that he stayed on the floor he got up to look better at the man in front of him, tell me Kakashi sensei you think. Now if Sakura Chan wants to go out with me, he asked with such a big smile on his face that his eyes closed. The more Naruto talked, the less he noticed the big frown on Kakashi Hitaki's face. Look Sensei and Sasuke is waking up, he said after turning to see his teammate who was slowly rising from the ground after opening his eyes again. Kakashi. Naruto was silenced by Kakashi who gave him a hard blow in the throat making it impossible for him to speak. The blonde fell to his knees while grabbing the affected area. Naruto tried to speak but the only thing that came out of his throat was a gurgle and a little blood which stained his lips and his orange clothes. Crouching a little Kakashi took the blonde by the hair making him scream a little pain because of the violent way in which this was holding him. Never in your life you call me damn sensei damn, you're just a misfortune for Konoha and everyone in the world. He said as he hit Naruto hard in the stomach causing more blood to leave his lips. Holding Naruto's head with both hands he crashed on. The floor before lifting it again so that it looked into his eyes. You're probably wondering why I'm doing this, Naruto, he asked, and all he got was for the blonde to cough up some blood which fell on his clothes. Do not dirty me with your foul blood demon, he said a little angry before to hit the blonde's head with his knee and then with the floor. After a few seconds he calmed down a bit and raised the blonde's head again, as Naruto kept telling you before, the truth is that no one ever wanted you. Neither I nor the Sandame Sama or Tsunade Sama, any of your classmates from the academy or anyone within all of Konoha or the Land of Fire ever loved you, since you are just a demon that only serves to be used as weapon to defend the town from any attack, he said as he hit him again. Tears came out through Naruto's eyes, Naruto was crying not because of the blows that Kakashi was giving him since he had endured worse throughout his life. So he was not crying for that, no, so he really was crying was because of the harsh and cruel words that came from the lips of his sensei, he could not believe everything he was saying, no, he refused to believe that everything in his life was a lie, a vile lie and cruel which was formed by all the people of the village of Konoha. Honestly it's amazing to see that you could beat Sasuke, apparently I'll have to increase his training much more after we return to Kanoa he said before grabbing Naruto by the throat with one hand while in his other hand he created a chidori which he used to pierce Uzumaki's right shoulder. The blonde scream again in pain when he was stabbed by the electric jutsu, ignoring the screams of the boy. Kakashi pulled out his hand causing the blonde's blood to stain his hand and the ground under the Releasing it Kakashi let the gravity do its job and before the boy dressed in orange could even get close to the ground the jump in air giving a turn using his right leg to kick blonde strongly causing it to fly flying towards a wall where it stayed embedded. 
Why, why are you doing this Kakashi Sensei? Thought Naruto uselessly since his voice did not work due to Kakashi's first blow, but even with everything the man had said and done he still refused to believe that his sensei was doing this to him, that his whole life was a lie and that all his friends were fake who were only lying to him all this time. Naruto tried to get out of the wall where he was embedded but before one of his arms could even get out of the wall the tube he opened his eyes involuntarily due to a kick that the ninja gave him to copy on his right side. I should have been killed when you were still a Naruto child, but the only reason I did not do it was because the Sandame said you would be a good weapon for the town and that's just why you're still alive and nothing more, he said as he grabbed him and threw him to the same place where he was previously and falling at the feet of the newly incorporated Uchiha. Do you want me to tell you another secret Naruto? I asked looking at the bloody blonde on the floor. Do you want me to tell you the other reason why the Sandame kept you alive? He asked but did not receive a response in return as the blonde could not speak. One of the reasons why you are still alive is because to Sasuke. Because so he could awaken the last level of the Sharingan he should kill his best friend. That's why the Sandami kept you alive and that's why he assigned you with Sasuke in the same team. Since you're a pathetic orphan in search of attention you would stick to anyone who offers you the slightest sign of sympathy. Humanity and attention, you are just like the Naruto stray dogs which attach themselves to anyone who gives him a bone or a bit of food, as well that's why the Sandame kept you alive all this time, that's why he always intervened when the mobs of villagers and ninjas hit you on every birthday, he said making Naruto's eyes open a little, Kakashi saw this and not could Evie Tar smile cruelly. Seriously do not tell me that you think the Sandame saved you because you cared, he said before laughing heavily at the blonde on the floor. Naruto, poor Naruto, maybe you did not know that Hiruzen Sama was the one who organized the mobs and let them beat you and then intervene and save you so that you see him as your savior and protector who protected you from the villagers and shinobi that you they wanted to hurt but none of that was true, the only truth is that you are only alive so that you give Sasuke the Mangekio Sharingan which we will now achieve with your death and your blood. Naruto looked up and saw Sasuke's face, the Uchiha was wearing a smile just as cruel as his teacher, raising his leg Sasuke let it fall on the face of Naruto breaking his nose in the process. Kakashi approached Sasuke who kept kicking Naruto in the face again and again and all with a sick smile on his face. Sasuke is enough. Kakashi said as he placed his hand on the shoulder of the Uchiha to stop him, as funny as this is and as much as I want to see the devil suffer. We have to end this quickly so it ends with him so you can get the Mangekio Sharingan, Kakashi said as he raised the shield of his forehead to show his Sharingan eyes. Reluctantly Sasuke nodded as he lifted Naruto up by the throat until he was in front of him, Sasuke hit Naruto various times in the stomach, the raven smiled a bit of happiness when he saw the look of defeat and betrayal on Naruto's face. You really thought someone cared about you Naruto, who wanted to make friends with a monster like you? Everything was planned from the beginning, he said as he hit Naruto in the stomach causing him to spit more blood. All your life you were a useless, adobe without value or importance in the world, with no one to take care of you or care for you but rejoice, in the end your pathetic life will serve to give me the next level of the Sharingan, only that's why I agreed to become your friend because only killing your best friend you can get this power, he said while creating a Chidori in his free hand. The Uchiha squeezed Naruto's neck tightly, the blonde remained suspended in the air, he did not have the strength to keep fighting and he did not want to do it either, not after everything he had heard, his whole life was a lie, all his life was a complete deception full of betrayals, disappointments, lies and abuses. To know that his whole life was a fake was the worst blow or torture he had suffered, he understood why it was that Serutobi was always so kind to him, an orphan without a name or family why one of the Sanin took it as his student, now that he listened to the truth of his supposed sensei the only thing he expected was that his death be quick and painless. Sasuke delighted as he looked at the blonde's face for the last time. Squeezing Naruto's neck tightly and he traversed Naruto's chest again with his Chidori like all previous times. The Uchiha frowned when unlike the first time he did not a hear not a single scream from the blonde, letting go of him letting him fall to the ground, a few seconds later he also fell with a strong burning and itch in his eyes, he shouted loudly as he brought his hands to his eyes which were burning like never before in his life, 
He could even feel how the crimson blood had started to come out of his eyes and roll down his face. After those that seemed hours of pain and agony insufferable his eyes finally calmed down, looking up he saw that Kakashi smiled and nodded indicating that he had obtained the Mangekyo Sharingan, looking at the blonde he saw that despite all he was still with life which caused him to get angry more than before, but giving him a closer look he saw that he was alive but not for long as his body had started to get a little pale. Kakashi smiled as he looked at the boy in front of him. Congratulations Sasuke you have reached the Mangekyo Sharingan, now you are one step closer to being able to kill your brother and avenge your clan, so when we return to Konoha we will all celebrate with your new eyes and because finally we decide on the devil, then I will train you every day so that you can master your new eyes completely, he said his student's pride and the new eyes he had achieved. When we finish your training you can master your Mangekyo Sharingan in a way that not even Itachi will be a rival for you, he said as he turned his gaze to Naruto who had his eyes almost completely closed indicating that he only had a few seconds left at the most. Now to get rid of the nasty demon, he said as he transformed his normal Sharingan into his Mangekyo. With the little life force that was left Naruto could feel his body was swallowed by a kind of hole that had formed on his chest. Being swallowed by the hole caused a great pain to travel throughout his body, the pain was strong but he could not scream and neither did he want to give Sasuke or Kakashi the pleasure of being heard. Screaming, he would not give either of the two bastards the pleasure of hearing their cries of pain. When Naruto's body was about to disappear completely a powerful bolt fell from the sky and over the boy's body causing the hole to distort a bit. After a few seconds Kakashi and Sasuke saw that Naruto's body had disappeared completely and without leave a trace. Naruto began to open his eyes slowly when he felt a strong breeze travel all over his face, when his blue eyes opened completely he could see the beautiful blue sky in front of him, the white fluffy clouds around him and the warm touch of the sun on his face. Maybe this is heaven, wondered to himself while all he saw was the blue sky and the beautiful clouds. Just being the presence of such a view caused all his pains to disappear and that he felt better than that he had never felt in his entire life. Suddenly the beautiful sight began to disappear quickly, the blonde also began to feel how his body seemed to descend at a high speed and without him could do something to stop, the more he felt that his body descended more the sky away from the blue and white clouds. No, a demon like me cannot be in a place like this. A demon like me only has a place to which it can belong and that is hell. Thought as he closed his eyes again and expected to fall hard on the floor of the hell that was the place where he belonged along with the other demons. Due to his back position and that he had closed his eyes Naruto could not see that while the more he descended the more he approached a great city which Parsia be made of pure gold due to its brilliant golden color. Under the great golden city were two men facing each other, one of them was a man with long white hair which almost reached the ground, the man was also half-stooped indicating that he was already in an advanced age, while the man in front of him was a young blonde who was looking at the older man with a slightly annoyed look on his face, but father we have to do something to stop this war between the three factions, this is already getting out of control, not only the angels, fallen angels and the demons are suffering from this war but the humans are also suffering and that without count the other species that have been turned into this chaos that caused this war, he said as he looked at his father who was caressing his long white beard. The man looked older than his son before sighing for what would be the tenth time in half an hour, I've told you a thousand times before, this war does not concern us, regardless of the consequences of this war we cannot do anything to stop it, said the old man while looking at the beautiful landscape around him. If you or any of the other Asgardians involved in the war would only cause all this to get worse. But Father I, Thor was silenced when he felt something fall behind him and created a huge hole in the ground, turning around he ran to the hole, when he arrived he saw that what had fallen behind him was a boy, a blonde boy, who was very hurt and did not seem to be more than 13 years old. Jumping into the hole he approached the boy and put a hand on his neck to see if he was still alive, seeing that even the boy was breathing he looked up to the sky. Who will be this boy, he is not an Asgardian, he is not a demon or an angel of any kind so from where he will have left, it is impossible for someone to arrive here without any of us noticing, he thought while he turns his gaze from the sky to the blonde boy dressed strangely. Narrowing his eyes he saw that the boy in his arms was beginning to move a little and to recover consciousness, even though that was only for a 
few brief seconds before falling back unconscious. What's going on, Thor, who is that boy? The man asked as he looked at his son, rushing the blonde boy. I do not know who the father is, he is not an Asgardian but he is still alive but that will not be for long if we do not give him medical treatment, he said as he carried him better in his arms, teaching his body he started out of the hole. Before the older man could ask something a hammer appeared in the blonde's hand, taking the hammer by a small rope that he had in the handle the blonde turned a couple of times before pointing to the sky where a few seconds later he left flying along with the boy in his arms. Three days have passed since Thor and his father found and brought the mysterious blonde boy who had fallen from the sky with his mother and the best healers in his town, all the healers including his mother who was the best of all had told him that the blonde boy was completely cured to 100% of all his wounds no matter how engraved and lethal they were. His mother had also told him that of all the wounds he had had the only one that would leave a permanent mark would be the wound on his chest which left a scar shaped like lightning. His mother had also told him that the boy had been very lucky to be alive since that wound must have killed him but apparently she had healed quickly preventing him from dying. He of course asked her when he could wake up since he had many questions to ask her but she told him that it was impossible to know because the only real damage he had was in his head, since apparently he had suffered a trauma so great that it was preventing him from waking up completely. Looking at the blonde boy he saw that he was peacefully asleep, but if a person with a good eye looked at him he would see that the blonde had suffered physical, mental and verbal abuse, he was also suffering from a great malnutrition due to the size that the possessed was not according to a person his age. Hearing steps behind him, he turned only to see that the person behind him was no other than father who had a curious look on his face. Odin, the king and god of all the Nordic gods, known as the father of everything Asagard looked at the blonde boy lying on a bed while he seemed to sleep peacefully and without problems. How is the child still? He asked as he looked at his eldest son, he was not worried about the boy himself but to know how it was that he was able to cross the barrera that surrounded and protected all Asgard. Mother says that all her wounds are completely healed, she also says that the only thing that prevents him from waking up is his mind, apparently he was the victim of a great mental trauma which was still affecting him and that is preventing him from waking up complete, said the god of thunder. Odin began to stroke his long beard while looking at the boy, he had many questions for the blonde, he wanted to know where he came from and how he came to his kingdom without anyone noticing his presence, he knew that there was no god or other being who could enter Asgard without his knowing it, much less an ordinary human like him. Narrowing his old eyes he watched as the boy moved on the bed as if he were having a nightmare, it seems that is about to wake up, he said as he watched as the blonde was moving in his bed more and more. Naruto opened his eyes slowly before closing them due to the intense white light that had hit him in the face. Trying again he began to open his eyes but now slower and more calmly than before, opening them a bit he waited for them to they used to the light before opening it completely, after his blue eyes got used to the light he looked at the ceiling of the room and he saw that the whole ceiling seemed to be made of gold, turning his gaze to another side he looked a window that was in the room where he was and he saw that everything that was outside the window seemed to be made of gold too. Suddenly his entire body tensed when he felt that someone was watching him, looking sideways he saw two men whom he had never seen in his life, one of them was a young and handsome man while the other was older and old, looking at his clothes he saw that these were dressed in a very strange way. Who are you and where am I? He asked as he picked himself up a little on the bed in fear that the two men in front of him would want to hurt him as his sensei Kakashi and his teammate Sasuke had done. Easy boy, we are not at all, said Thor as he took a step forward but stopped when he saw the blonde was made more back to get as far away as possible from him, calm down, nobody here wants to hurt you, we just want to talk to you that's all. Do not be afraid, I'll open it for you, Naruto said completely scared of the two men in front of him. Seeing how the boy was scared of the Thor took a step back to the place where he was and saw how the blonde calmed down a bit. Quiet, we're nothing, my name is Thor and this is my father Odin, we were the ones who met you after you had fallen from the sky, he said confusing Naruto a little since he did not remember any of that. Tell me young, you could tell us your name and where they came from. Even though the man said he was not angry at all Naruto was not willing to believe in him or his words so he decided to stay alert if he wanted to approach him, he could no longer afford to trust someone, 
He was not willing to trust someone other than himself, not after what his sensei and teammate did to him. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and I'm from, Naruto stopped at what he was about to say when Kakashi's words echoed in his head again. The words of how everyone in Konoha was using him only for the Kiyubi inside. How all the friends that he had won in his whole life were false, a feeling of hatred and anger was forming within him when he remembered all the abuse and suffering that he had suffered at the hands of his old people, he had endured everything with a smile and hoping that one day they would recognize him and treat him like a normal person, but now after knowing the whole truth he just wanted to go back to the village and finish what the Kiyubi and Suna started and could not finish. I was rather from the village of Konohagakir no Sato. Konoha, I had never heard of that place, Odin said as he looked at Naruto. Tell me child where is this Konoha exactly? He asked him since he had been in the world almost since his creation and he had never heard a place with the name of Konoha, because if a place with that name existed he was sure he would know it. Naruto looked at the two men in front of him a little confused, as they could not know Konoha if this was one of the five great ninja villages but the strongest of all which was well known worldwide. Konoha is located in the land of fire, he said looking at the men who were confused. Do not you know Konoha or the country of fire? I asked with wide eyes of surprise. Child, in all my years of life I had never heard a village mentioned by the name of Konoha. Odin said seriously, for me you hit your head when you fell from the sky and that is affecting your memory and your memories, the older man said while looking at the blonde. Wait father, said Thor interrupting Naruto before he could say something in his defense. Tell me one thing Naruto, in that village called Konoha they use some kind of special power or ability that you can tell us, he asked making the blonde nod. You think you could tell us what energy is called or special abilities that the citizens of Konoha. Looking at both men fixedly or rather the clothes they used Naruto quickly realized a couple of things. One was that with a simple look at the clothes of Odin and Thor he realized that they were wearing clothes that were not it matched the one used in any of the five main ninja villages or in any other lower rank ninja village, another was that he could not recognize where he was. Naruto had a secret that he had never told anyone, he never told anyone that he really was smarter than everyone thought and what he showed, from a very early age that he had learned all the names, economy and political structure of all the village ninjas, he also went almost every night in the library of Konoha to read everything possible about everything he thought would be useful in his career ninja. But he never said that to anyone, instead he opted to become the idiot of the class and the one who never listened or studied when in fact it was the opposite, another thing that motivated him more to use the mask of stupidity was the fact that no matter how well he answered the questions or exams from the academy, his teachers always reproved him by changing his exam for another one that had. All the questions answered badly. Another thing that led him to believe that he was not in any known ninja village was the fact that the place where he was seemed to be more developed than even the country of spring since he had seen a kind of ship fly by as if it were not the big deal, so looking at the two men in front of him he decided to get as much information as possible from them before running away. The energy that we use is a mixture of physical energy and spiritual energy called chakra, thanks to that we can create the techniques called jutsus, he said as he looked at Odin. Odin's eyes widened a little when he heard what Naruto said. Chakra, that's impossible, only a few can use that energy and it's mostly the great sages who spent years trained and some yokia who were born with that energy, he said while looking at the blonde in bed. Also I do not feel a single magic index or yokai essence in you child, in fact I cannot even feel a pinch of chakra in your body, Odin said while looking at the blonde. Thor looked at Naruto and then at his father before speaking. That is because he is not of this world or this father dimension, I believe that he belongs to a different dimension to ours which apparently is more backward than ours and where they use chakra instead of magic. Odin's gaze shifted from Naruto to his firstborn son, another. Dimension? He asked to his son who nodded with a serious look on his face. You are crazy, Thor. You want to tell me that this boy by himself not only managed to travel from one dimension to another but also achieved survive the dimensional gap where even powerful beings like us cannot survive without using the Bifrost, he said as he looked at his son and heir to the throne of Asgard as if he were crazy. This is father, as impossible as it sounds to believe that is the only logical explanation that seem can happen at the moment, said while looking at the blonde who apparently was looking for a way out the 
window without them knowing. Do not even try it Naruto, if you jump. Out of that window you'll fall to certain death, even I could not survive a fall like that. Naruto was surprised that the man knew what he wanted to do with just a glance, looking away from his son to the blonde young man the father of all Asgard spoke while stroking his white beard. If this guy is really from another dimension then we have to make sure that he is not a danger to Asgard or someone else, it's bad enough that the factional war is spreading to other places so that now we have to worry about of an attack from another dimension that we do not know anything about, he said while looking at Naruto seriously. So I'm sorry boy, but you will come with us to be questioned about where you are and what your true intentions are, he said as he began to walk towards the blonde. No, get away from me, Naruto said scared when he saw that the man started walking towards him. Do not come near, he said, but the man ignored him. I told you to stay away from me, he said as his eyes went totally white. The eyes of Thor and Odin opened when a bolt of lightning broke through the ceiling where they were and fell on the blonde and covered him completely. Thor's eyes then narrowed a little when he saw how all the sky above them was beginning to darken and flash. Not knowing what was going on in the sky over Odin, he looked at the boy in front of him before grabbing his cane with both hands. Child, I do not know who you think you are but you are not a match for me, he said as he took another step towards Naruto while pointing his cane at him. I said to stay away from me, Naruto spoke with a deeper voice and fill with power, raising his right hand the pointing towards both men who were surprised when a beam formed in the blonde's hand. The face of surprise of Odin and Thor only increased more when the beam shot out of Naruto's hand and hit both of them causing both to fly backwards as they collided and destroyed several walls that were in their way. After sending both men away from the blonde he returned to normal and began to pant heavily, looking at what he had. Done he looked at his hands completely surprised, like me, the blonde could not finish what he had started because his eyes had turned white and he had fallen unconscious on the bed. Odin and Thor left the fifth wall that was between them and the room where Naruto was, they were completely surprised by the blonde's attack and by the power behind it, the attack was not only strong enough to send them away, of several walls but also had enough power to hurt them a little to both. Walking through all the walls they returned to the room where the blonde was only to find him unconscious in bed. What the hell just happened? Odin asked as he approached the sleeping blonde. Thor also approached the unconscious blonde, raised his eyes the hole he saw that the sky had returned to normal. What just happened father is that I just found my new successor, said the blonde while a smile appeared on his face. Odin looked at his son a little confused, your new successor, asked the father of everything. This is father, this guy who will be the new thunder god of Asgard here, he said before turning his gaze to the unconscious blonde, he could see that after the lightning strike him Naruto's body had inflated a little. Naruto opened his blue eyes only to discover that he was in the same room where he had woken up last time, but now with a slight change which was a big hole in the ceiling. I see you're finally awake young, he heard a female voice by his side, a voice that he had never heard before in his life. Standing on the bed he was turning back when he landed at a distance from the bed he saw that the, the woman was an elderly lady who looked a little like the blonde he had seen before falling unconscious. Calm down honey, I won't hurt you, she said with a reassuring smile, nobody here will hurt you, I promise. Naruto looked at the woman with a lot of distrust, after what happened in the valley of the end with Sasuke and Kakashi he was not willing to trust anyone so easily. Who are you and where are the men from before? He asked as he looked at the woman sitting in his chair who just kept smiling at him kindly. My name is Frigga, and the men you saw earlier are my son Thor and my husband Odin, he said as he rose from his chair, but as soon as she did that, the blonde took several steps back to maintain the distance between them. Approaching the window Naruto saw that what Thor had told him before was true, if the neglect to jump through the window of the room where he was would fall to certain death, he was sure that even using his chakra he could survive a fall from the height he was in. Chakra, now that he thought about it since he woke up he had not been able to feel his chakra, closing his eyes momentarily trying to feel it but could not, instead he felt another type of energy, a much more powerful than his chakra and denser, opening his eyes he saw that the woman had disappeared from his place, looking everywhere. He did not find her, it seems he left, thought after not seeing the woman anywhere. 
Seeing that the woman had gone the blonde knew that this would be the best opportunity he would have to escape, although now that he thought about it even if he managed to escape he had no place to go and he didn't know where he was either, he couldn't return to Konoha not after what Kakashi told him, and although he returned as much as possible is that he be killed by the copying ninja or by the same old Hokage. But even if things were like that he couldn't stay in this strange place, the first one would take care to get out of where he was and then think about what to do. Going out the door, the blonde began to walk down the great hallway outside the room where he was, while he was walking, he heard footsteps and people talking, so he quickly ran to a nearby pillar and hid behind it so that no one would I saw, after a few seconds he saw two men dressed in strange gold-colored armor with long red capes which almost touched the ground. After the Uzumaki saw that the guards disappeared, he used everything he learned about stealth at the Konoha Ninja Academy and during his prankster days to escape from the immense castle where he was. The place was immense and took almost a time to find a door that would take him out of the gigantic golden-colored castle, during that hour he was looking for a way out the tube that dodged many guards who were apparently patrolling, the tube that admitted that the guards of this place did know how to make a patrol since while trying to escape he had almost been discovered by a pair of guards who had left a room which looked like a weapons room. But luckily for the blonde Uzumaki no one found or discovered him while he tried to escape from the great castle. So after an hour of searching he arrived at a large double door which were open and unattended, so after making sure well, there was no one near the path to the great double door which seemed to be made of pure gold. As soon as he walked through the big golden doors Naruto could not prevent his eyes from opening as they had never opened in his entire life. He had never seen anything as beautiful and magnificent as what he was seeing right now. The view of the city in front of him was ten times better than what he had obtained in his old house. The whole city seemed to be made of gold, from his position he could see a lot of buildings which were so large that they seemed to reach the sky, he also saw a lot of people walking everywhere, many of whom stared at him for a few seconds before follow his path, but the best thing was that everyone had seen him with curious looks, very different from the looks of hatred and contempt he received when he was in Konoha. Looking up at the sky he saw what appeared to be ships flying through the sky as if by magic, in the distance Naruto saw a huge bridge, larger than the bridge that the old Tizuna had built in the country of the waves, but the most surprising thing about the bridge was not its enormous size, but that it shone with the colors of a rainbow. And without a doubt, the view in front of Uzumaki was the most impressive of all. This is impressive, he said to himself as he kept looking at the big city in front of him. I had never seen anything as impressive as this. Yes, there is no place in the world that can compare to Asgard, said Thor as he appeared behind the blonde. This is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world, said the god behind the youngest blonde. Naruto quickly leapt back as he stood guard to fight the blonde man who appeared behind him with his hammer in hand. Seeing how the blonde was placed in a position ready to fight he raised his hands in surrender as he stepped back. Calm down Naruto, I don't want to fight with you or hurt you. I just want to talk that's all, he said taking another step back. Naruto looked the man in the eye and saw that he was telling her the truth completely so he calmed down a bit but still he was not under guard, he was not willing to lower her. Fine but don't get close to me, he said as he turned to see the impressive city. What is this place exactly, he asked as he looked confused as a couple of girls his age smiled at him while they blushed a little. This is Asgard, the city of the Asgardian gods, he said as he watched as the girls looked at the blonde. Naruto's eyes widened when I heard that. Gods, you mean that you and everyone here are gods, I asked completely surprised. Thor shook his head as he looked at the blonde, not everyone here, many are just beings with great power and great abilities, only my father Odin who is the father of all Asgardians is the supreme god here, my mother who is the mother of everything, my half-brother. Loki who is the god of lies and deception and finally I am the god of thunder, or at least for now, he said with a mysterious smile. Naruto was confused about what the man said so he decided to ask him, for now, what do you mean by that, asked the full of curiosity. My father wants to retire and wants me to become the new father of everything so that I can rule in Asgard as the supreme god. That's good no, now you will be the new leader of all this land and its people, he said as he remembered his old dream of becoming the Konoha Hokage, something that can never happen now. 
On the one hand yes, but on the other hand my place is on the battlefield, I am not yet done to sit on the throne and rule over. Asgard, he tried to take a step closer to the blonde, but that caused him to turn the youngest blonde took a step further from the. Besides before that I have to look for a worthy successor who inherits my power and my hammer Mjolnir, he said as he showed the hammer to the blonde, and I'm thinking that person could be your Naruto. Confusion and surprise took over Uzumaki's face. I, Naruto said confused as he pointed to himself. That's Naruto, the current god of thunder said with a smile on his face. Tell me young, Naruto that is the last thing you can remember before you were previously unconscious. Naruto was confused by the man's question, recalling the attempt to remember that it was the last one he saw or did before he passed out a second time. I, I remember that the old man was approaching me but that's it, I can't remember anything else he said while looking at the man or rather God. Thor looked at the blonde before turning his hammer a couple of times and showing it to Uzumaki. Once this Naruto hammer, this is a very special hammer since only a few people can hold it due to a strong spell placed on it and only people who are worthy and pure-hearted can lift it and handle all its incredible power, he said while he placed the hammer on the floor and took a couple of steps back. So I want you to try to lift it Naruto, he said as he pointed to the weapon of the gods. Naruto saw the hammer on the floor, shrugging the one walked towards him, the blonde ducked and tried to lift it and surprisingly for him the hammer was incredibly heavy, heavier than anything else he had tried to lift in his life, so that by planting his feet firmly on the ground he kept trying to lift the heavy hammer which slowly became lighter until he could lift it completely. EH, because it doesn't feel as heavy as it used to be, he said as he lifted the hammer with one hand, throwing it into the air, he caught it with his other hand it's as light as a feather. That's because the hammer considers you a worthy person with a pure heart, said Thor as he looked at the blonde and the hammer. That's why you can hold it so easily Naruto, because he knows that you are not a person with no evil in your heart. Before Naruto could say anything he saw how everything suddenly went dark, looking up at the sky he saw how a lot of dark clouds covered the beautiful blue sky, thunder, lightning and lightning began to descend from the sky quickly. The blonde had to jump a few times to avoid being hit by one of the many rays that were falling from the now dark sky. What's going on? He asked as he prevented another lightning from splitting it in two, it was as if the rays were rising where he was. Thor smiled a little when he saw Naruto jump again to avoid lightning followed by two flashes. Calm down Naruto, everything will be fine. Raising his hand in lightning, he fell on it and covered it completely. Once this is nothing, this is the power of the Naruto hammer, whoever owns it can obtain my power to control thunder get scared, nothing bad will happen to you. Looking at the named god of thunder Naruto nodded and let a lightning bolt go over him. When the lightning covered his body he felt like his whole body was filled with power, although he also felt something else running through his body, something he could not identify, but whatever it was made him feel good, feel powerful and invincible. Feeling a tingle throughout his body he looked at himself and watched as his whole body began to change, suddenly he felt himself getting a little taller, his muscle mass began to grow a little more while a strange armor resembling that of Thor began to cover his body. I guess the armor also comes with the hammer, he said after seeing the armor that covered his entire body. That's Naruto, the armor is also part of the Mjolnir, along with the ability to fly an incredible super force and as I told you the ability to control thunder and all those things, looking at his hand the son of Odin saw how he lost half of his powers. That's good but I aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
But what I'm sure of is that he didn't reject you because you could hold it in your hands, if he had rejected you you would not even have been able to move it, I just think that you need a little more training before you can master it, he said as he looked at the smallest blonde who had grown a little. So what do you say Naruto, you would want to stay and become my successor, become the next god of thunder, he asked with a small smile on his face. Naruto stared at the man while he thought about his offer, if he stayed he could start from scratch, with no hateful looks, no mistreatment from his companions or lies from them, no one knew him or the fox he has in his in addition, he did not know if he could return to his dimension and if he did he had nowhere to go, he had been almost killed by his sensei and teammate, he also had no one to worry about him or miss him. Looking at the man he made his decision, so nodding his head he spoke with a look full of determination on his face, if Thor, I want to stay and become your successor, he said, he would stay. He would become strong, very strong, as strong as he could, and if one day he would return to Konoha the Aryan everyone would pay to betray him, to lie to him and to want to kill him. Everyone will pay with their lives for having lied and betrayed me. Without Naruto noticing the sky darkened a little more as more lightning sounded in the sky. Not knowing what was going on in the blonde's head Thor smiled as he watched the blonde. Then get ready, Naruto because this will be the hardest and most intense entertainment you will ever have in your life, he said as he smiled in a way that caused the blonde to shiver. Eight years later, Naruto bent down while nimbly dodging a spear of one of the Asgardian soldiers who had him surrounded, lifting the blonde Mjolnir with a lightning bolt which he used to attack the poor man who had attacked him before. Turning to use his free hand to stop a sword, the man who owned the sword tried to release his sword with all his strength from Naruto's hand but could not since he was holding it tightly. That was a mistake, Naruto said before lifting the hammer and hitting the man with him in the center of his chest with such force that he sent him against a wall where he crashed and was unconscious. I think I got a little excited, thought as he looked at the soldier on the ground, if he had hit him harder the poor man might have died. Looking around the blonde saw that there were only 40 men of the hundred with whom he had begun to fight, grabbing the hammer by a small rope that he had at the bottom of the handle, raising it above his head he began to turn it quickly creating a small tornado around it. All the guards began to sweat quickly when they saw that a smile of emotion appeared on the blonde's face, even being in the tornado they could see his dangerous smile. Turning around, everyone was ready to run and hide when they saw how the blonde began to rise from the ground while the tornado continued to revolve around him. Oh shit! Was the last thing one of the guards said before being hit in the chest by a powerful lightning bolt that shot out from the tornado that protected Naruto. Smiling behind the tornado the Uzumaki released the hammer he had in his hand making it begin to spin around him and crush all the guards of the kingdom trying to escape or face it. Landing in front of a group of five he raised his hand towards them as if he were waiting for something, all the guards in front of Naruto turned their heads and turned pale when they saw that the Mjolnir was coming directly towards them. All the guards in front of Naruto flew through the sky when the Mjolnir hit them in the back. Lowering his hand, the blonde let the hammer go long and crash into the face of a guard who wanted to attack him from behind, with the last guard knocked down. Naruto raised his hand causing the Mjolnir to return to him before placing him on his shoulder right. Naruto looked at all the guards on the ground with a smile on his face, some were unconscious, some were only lying on the ground while they were resting, while the unfortunates who were hit by the Mjolnir or by one of the lightning bolts it generated they were groaning in pain. Come on guys, I don't know why you are complaining so much, you know this is nothing compared to my other thoughts, he said as he watched as some of the lairs on the ground gave him glaring glances. Since Naruto had begun his training with Thor eight years ago, the blonde had discovered that he liked to fight, but not only to fight but to fight and beat powerful people, for the past eight years he had faced off against all the best that Asgard he has been able to throw him and almost always he was victorious. Against the only people he always lost in a fight was against Thor, the half-brother of this one called Loki, Odin and a few Valkyrias, but apart from them everyone else had been defeated and crushed by him, which always made him smile the same way he was smiling now. Come on guys we are having fun. I don't think so Naruto-sama, a guard said as he rose from the ground clutching his aching chest. Only you would call him having fun to face a hundred men just after finishing an eight-hour workout. Leaning back from a wall the guard proceeded to remove the front part of his armor to breathe better. 
Naruto smiled as he looked at the man, he recognized him as the one he had hidden the chest with the hammer, well one of them, since he had lost count of how many guards he had hidden the chest with his hammer, well, you said it yourself, it was just an 8 hour physical training, just before he faced all the guards he had trained and faced Thor for 8 hours straight with only 15 minutes of rest every hour. But you know you're right, this is no fun, let's call it a warm up so how about this, you will rest for 5 minutes and then start again, he said as he watched as some of those present became completely pale just thinking about having to face him again. I'm sorry Naruto-sama but I have a guard in half an hour, said a different guard than he had spoken the first time, he had dark skin and only one eye on his face. And I, another said, me too sir. My wife is at home almost giving birth, sir, so I have to go with her, another said as he rose from the ground. I have to travel to the human world for some supplies, I am not even here today. While I'm on call, Naruto watched as one by one his opponents began to say that they had to guard all Asgard and other excuses, many of which could be true but most were only inventing excuses so as not to fight him again, putting the that looked like a face of disappointment the blonde looked at them all. Too bad, and I thought to buy beers for everyone after training, he said, causing everyone's eyes to open, both the guards who were on the floor and those who stood stood firmly while looking at the blonde and began to say that their schedule had been changed for later and that they could stay a little longer. Fine then because we don't start again, he said before aiming his hammer at the sky. Lightning struck the sky from Naruto's hammer, who then threw himself against the guards again, not far from where Naruto was. Thor was watching the blonde's performance. He saw how Naruto had improved as no person in his life had done, the blonde had exceeded all his expectations in an incredible and positive way, his strength, endurance and intelligence were at the same level of many people who led him many years of life. Although not everything went well, Naruto had taken a whole year to allow a person to get close to him both physically and emotionally, everyone who tried to get too close ended up being a victim of lightning thrown from the hand of blonde Uzumaki. But after a year the barrier he had created with everyone around him had disappeared. In his second year of staying in Asgard, he had decided to tell all members of the Asgard royal family about his past, he had told everyone about the abuse, abuse, beatings, insults and all other bad things that they had happened to him in Konoha, he had also told them everything Kakashi had told him and how everyone in town was only using it at his convenience. After he had told them that it had to be necessary all the strength of Odin along with almost all the guards of the castle to stop him since he was willing to travel to the former dimension of the blonde and destroy everyone in that corrupt village and degenerated. After he had calmed down he had promised Naruto that no one would hurt him that way again, so that that would not happen he had increased the training of the blonde almost to triple and the tube to admit that the results brought a big smile to his face. He had taken the blonde to the limit and made him break those limits with each new training, the blonde had become a master of both the sword and the use of the spear. He also had so much control over the Mjolnir that he could almost compare himself to it and most of all, no one knew that the younger blonde continued so he could overcome it very soon. The thunder god Thor's eyes narrowed when he saw Naruto start to growl because the Mjolnir had burned his hand again for him to release, raising his hand he took the hammer and examined it, even after eight years the Mjolnir continued to reject Naruto after a certain time and even they had not been able to discover the reason for that, looking at the blonde he saw how he fired all the guards to have a couple of beers before starting to walk towards the stroking the hand already healed. One thing that surprised everyone was that even without the power of the fox within its alarming healing factor it was still active. Apparently you reached your limit again, now you can last a full hour with the Mjolnir in your possession before he rejects you, he said as he looked at the blonde who stopped in front of him. Naruto looked at the man who had changed his life completely, thanks to Thor and his offer he was much stronger than ever before in his life, he knew for sure that if he was still in his old dimension he would never have been able to get such strength and power. I still don't know why that happens, I already proved that I am worthy of being his bearer, but he still rejects me, he said as he looked at the long-haired man. I think I could answer that for you, said a very familiar voice to them, turning around they both saw Frigga Thor's mother giving a warm smile to both of them. Frigga looked at his son and Naruto, since the blonde had arrived he had changed everyone's life, 
Since he opened up to them and had allowed the cell people to approach he had dedicated himself to help in everything possible to pay everything what they had done for him, every time he was not training he was helping in everything he could and to everyone who could, in just eight years the blonde had earned a very special place in the hearts of many people within Asgard including her and her family. Mother, Thor said as he looked at the woman who had brought him into the world. They finally discovered what happens to Naruto and the hammer, he asked, after telling the problem between Naruto and the Mjolnir to everyone in his family Thor saw how his mother analyzed Naruto to find an explanation for that problem, but unfortunately she couldn't find anything at the time and because of that she has spent the last few years trying to find a solution to that problem or the reason for that problem. Frigga nodded as she looked at the blonde who stared at her at all times. Yes, right now I came to receive the last analysis of the young Naruto and thanks to that we could discover what causes the Emjirir to reject him, she spoke before forming a magic circle in her hand, a hologram of the body of the blonde appeared in the middle of a magic circle so everyone could see him. Naruto was completely amazed when he discovered that the people of this world did not use chakra but another form of energy called magic which was more condensed than the chakra and more versatile, he had seen all the different uses that magic had as well as different spells that could be made and created with it, many of the spells reminded the fuinjutsus of which he had read so much in the ninja library, he had learned many different spells and all caused great destruction. But none like his power over lightning and thunder which could only be overcome by Thor himself, so what happens between the hammer and me, he asked as he looked at the woman. According to the latest data gathered from your last analysis, it seems that the entire chakra of your body was replaced by magic, even the beast that was inside you disappeared from your body leaving only a large deposit of pure magic, she said, surprising her son and the youngest blonde. Apparently all that happened because of your brief stay in the dimensional gap and the arrival in this world where there is not enough chakra to keep yours stable so that is why your body began to change the whole chakra by magic to keep you alive which caused the Kiyubi inside you to disappear forever, he said before pausing to see if they were both keeping track of him. That part one understand mother, but what I do not understand is because the Mjolnir continues to reject Naruto. Thor spoke while looking at his mother. I was about to get to that son. Apparently the Mjolnir is not rejecting Naruto, in fact this the opposite the Mjolnir cannot withstand all the power that runs through Naruto's body so he tries to free himself from it before he is destroyed by the power of Naruto, which means that if Naruto does not release the Mjolnir when it starts to overheat it can end up being destroyed due to the large amount of power that Naruto's body generates, she said as she looked at the younger blonde. Thor looked at Naruto, he knew that the blonde's power was great, greater than that because every time he used all his powers his eyes changed in a very different way, also his control over thunder was almost surpassing the of the. Then you are saying that Naruto's power is great that the Mjolnir can't help you, he said, making his mother nod. Naruto looked at his hands, concentrating a little he saw how his hands began to generate a lot of electrical energy. Looking up at the sky his eyes turned white and the whole sky above them began to darken and flash, he could feel all the power that ran through his body, all the power that shouted out to be released in a fierce and brutal way. Naruto closed his eyes for a few seconds and when he opened them again he began to bow slowly, opening his eyes he made all the clouds of storms disappear and his eyes returned to normal as he descended to the ground, looking at the mother duo. Son the blonde spoke. So that means I can't become your successor Thor, he asked. The man looked at the blonde and saw a kind of disappointment on his face, he knew how excited Naruto got every time he finished one of his many workouts to become his successor, everything he had done and all the way that he had traveled so far had only been to achieve that goal, looking at his mother he saw how she nodded. Don't worry about that Naruto, even without the Mjolnir you have enough power to one day be the next god of Asgard's thunder. Naruto placed a small smile on his face as he looked at the god of thunder, hearing someone calling him by his name, turning around saw that the person who was calling him was one of the guards with whom he was entering so that he would take a beer with them. Smiling he looked at the mother and son. Go ahead Naruto go, have fun, Thor's mother said before the blonde could say something. Thank you, my lady, he said as he bowed a little. See you later sensei, he said and Thor just nodded. That boy will achieve great things someday, Thor said as he looked at his future successor as the god of thunder. 
Yes, I see a great future for him, Frigga said looking at the retired blonde. I just hope to live long enough to see it, she said quietly before leaving. One year later 365 days had passed since Naruto learned what his power was doing to the Mjolnir and since that day he had stopped training with him and had better concentrated more on controlling his immense power which continued to grow uncontrollably, due to that every time the blonde had a kind of nightmare or was very stressed his power was released uncontrollably and destroyed everything around him. On several occasions he had destroyed his entire room while dreaming and remembering everything that had happened to Kakashi and Sasuke in the Valley of the End, and during one of those nights of nightmares Thor tried to wake him up and they both ended up having a fierce fight due to that when he opened his eyes he did not see Thor but that the person he saw in front of him went to Kakashi. When he managed to enter himself again half the castle was in ruins, the only good thing about it was that no one died or was seriously injured. Many of the Asgardians who had seen the fight started calling Naruto the god of thunder as well as Thor, of course that didn't matter to the older blonde and let people keep calling the younger blonde that way, because of that now in Asgard there were two god of thunder. Currently Naruto and Thor were walking through the lands of the dwarf kingdom called Nidavellir which was under the care and protection of Asgard, the blonde had heard a lot about Nidavellir because that place was where the most powerful weapons of the entire universe, such as the Mjolnir and many of the weapons used by the Asgardian elite warriors and the Valkyria. While walking Naruto saw endless dwarves, some were working on the forge of new weapons while others were drunk and others were sleeping, looking at the god of thunder the blonde asked him the question that has been on his mind since they decided to come to this place. So Thor, what are we doing in this place? the blonde asked as he looked at the god who had a smile on his face. Thor smiled a little more while looking at the blonde. Do you remember what day Naruto is today? He asked looking at the blonde. Naruto was confused by the man's question, but still he decided to answer it. October 10th, he said simply. And that means that today is your birthday, Naruto was surprised that Thor remembered his birthday. Hell, he hadn't even remembered that because when he was in Konoha the only thing he received as a congratulation were the cold looks of the villagers and ninjas of the town, it didn't help that that was the same day it was celebrated the fox's attack on the village and its defeat at the hands of Minato Namikaze. So as a gift I brought you here to meet Itri the dwarf king who personally formed my hammer, he said as he looked at the man working, and speaking of the devil, look at him there. Naruto stopped dead when he saw the name Vitri, after that blonde looked at Thor and then at the man and repeated the same action a couple more times before speaking. You're not really serious, Naruto said as he gave Thor a strange look. What do you mean Naruto, I don't understand you, asked the confused blonde. The blonde looked at Thor as he pointed to one of the place's dwarves. That is a dwarf, that is another and that is another, he said as he pointed to two more. But this, this is a giant fucking, he said as he looked at the tall and imposing dwarf king who had turned to see them. What did you call me boy, said the man as he approached the blonde with a large mallet in his hand. Naruto looked at the man without any hint of fear on his face, he had never faced a dwarf before but he had faced one or another giant which were much larger and more frightening than the dwarf king in front of him. It is not for offending or anything, but you are anything but a dwarf. I say just look at your size, you are almost five times larger than everyone here. Itri looked at Naruto for a few seconds before smiling and putting his hand on the blonde's shoulder, hard, very hard if they asked the blonde since he had to grimace when the man's palm hit his shoulder, a palm that it was almost twice as big as his head. I like this guy, he said as he patted Naruto a couple of times making him almost scream in pain when he felt his shoulder was about to break but luckily for him the great dwarf stopped doing that. So, Itri is ready? Thor asked making the man nod. If it's almost complete, just a few adjustments are missing, he said as he turned around and began to walk. Follow me. Naruto stared at both men while they talked about something apparently very important. Following both men the blonde approached a large boiler which was filled with a material which he recognized as the same steel that was used to create the Mjolnir. All the material was melting rapidly due to the high temperatures in which the boiler was located where he was. Shit this is burning, Uzumaki said as he moved away from the hot boiler. A snort came out of Itri's lips as he looked at the blonde. Nanita, he said before walking to the boiler. 
The Uzumaki watched in amazement as Itri approached the big boiler and when he saw that all the steel had completely melted he turned it with his own bare hands without even making a small complaint or grimacing at touching the super hot boiler. The blonde saw how the dwarf king poured all the molten metal into an axe-shaped mold, after that he picked up a wooden handle and placed it inside the mold and surprisingly it did not catch on or burned due to the high temperature of the molten metal. After a few seconds Naruto watched as Itri took his big mallet and began hitting the mold hard, the sparks flew all over the place just like the sound of metal hitting the metal. Naruto saw all this completely astonished and fascinated, he had seen how many kinds of weapons were forged for nothing like what he was seeing now. What is this Thor, what is happening, he asked without being able to endure the desire and curiosity to know what the man was forging. This is the weapon of a god, Itri said as he turned his head to look at the blonde, and although he was looking at Naruto his hands kept hitting the metal he had cast. The weapon of a god, Naruto repeated confused, yes, when Thor learned about your problem with the Mjolnir he asked me to build a weapon that could hold and control all your power, the dwarf king said as he created a magic circle on what he was forging. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, directing his gaze to Thor he saw that he was smiling at him. That's right, asked the surprised, nobody had ever given him anything or done something similar, the only thing he had received before arriving here were looks of hatred and teasing from all the people around him. Thor nodded as he looked at the surprised blonde. That's Naruto, I told you that I would make you my successor and I will. Naruto had to endure the desire to release a couple of tears, nobody had ever worried so much about how Thor and his whole family had done it, since he opened up to them they had treated him as part of his family, well at least almost every. Thank you, Naruto said quietly but still the god of thunder heard him. You're welcome, Thor said as he watched as King Itri disappeared the magic circle and took the mallet again to continue hitting his creation. After almost five minutes Itri stopped hitting the axe mold with his giant mallet, turning to look at the younger blonde. It is ready. The only thing missing is that you hit it with your most powerful lightning so boy, show me all your power, show me the power that Thor talks about so much, the dwarf said as he moved away from the axe's mold. Naruto nodded as he closed his eyes to concentrate better, his entire body began releasing electric shocks all over the place. Both Thor and Itri had to take several steps back when Naruto's entire body began firing lightning and electrical energy everywhere. Even the dwarves who were working in other areas had to cover themselves so as not to be hit by one of the blonde's rays. So much power, this is amazing, Itri said while looking at the blonde boy. Yes, but this is still not all, this is only half of Naruto's power, he said surprising the dwarf king. Is there even more? The bearded dwarf asked and Thor nodded. Then I see why it was that you asked me to build this weapon, it is impossible that the Mjonral can withstand and less control so much power. Naruto opened his eyes showing everyone that they had changed color, now the blonde's eyes were almost white, it has fallen back all the blue they had and now they were only almost as white as the sclera of the eyes. In the blonde's hand a large electric ball formed which was almost the size of his body, looking at the mold he saw that it was beginning to cool, so before that happened he added a little more of his power to the sphere in his hands before throwing all that power against the axe mold that Itri was forging. For a minute Naruto kept unloading the biggest and most powerful lightning bolt he had ever created in his life, after a minute and having unloaded all the new power god of Asgard fell on one of his knees a little exhausted, he may not have used all his power. Completely, but that does not mean that he did not feel a little exhausted from the effort he had made, in fact, he hadn't used so much power since his last fight against Thor. Itri quickly ran to the axe with a smile on his face, he saw how it was red hot so he used mallet hit it several times causing the mold to break and show everyone the incredible weapon he had finished creating. Before the eyes of the whole weapon began to float and turn while shooting small rays in all directions, slowly the weapon continued to spin as it approached Naruto. Seeing this, the only Uzumaki in Asgard raised his right hand and took what his new weapon would be and as soon as Naruto touched the weapon he could feel how tired he felt completely disappeared quickly, as if it had never existed, rising from the I usually turn his axe a few times before placing it on his right shoulder. Perfect, he said before looking at the king of the dwarves, as it is called, he asked. Stormbreaker, Itri replied while looking at the younger blonde. 
I think it's a bit ostentatious, Thor said as he looked at Naruto's gun. It is the weapon of a god, which I expected, Mjolnir two inches e tree replied while looking at the Odinson. No, but something more simple and modest, the Mjolnir owner said. He can also invoke the Bifrost, he said, surprising both blonde men. Also, what else can this weapon do? Thor asked as he looked at the blonde's axe. What, are you jealous? Itri asked while looking at the older blonde. I don't just say the name is a bit ostentatious that's all. For me it is a perfect name, Naruto while looking at the gun, besides me. Naruto was silenced when a powerful lightning bolt crossed the entire roof from where they were and fell on him causing an intense light to cover him and illuminate the whole place when the light stopped a few seconds later everyone could see that Naruto had changed a bit. His eyes were no longer blue or the flashing blue they had when he used all his power, in fact his eyes did not exist. Now where previously his eyes were now there were only two large white grounds without pupils or irises, it was like looking into a white paint canister, from time to time a small lightning could be seen coming out of them, his clothing was also something else that he had changed for armor the same as Thor had but in a little darker and with some slight changes, his body was something else that had changed too, his muscle mass increased a little more than before. Thor saw the change of the boy and could not help but be surprised by his new appearance. Naruto is you, are you all right? He asked a little worried about the blonde boy. If I feel completely good, in fact, I have never felt better, the blonde replied as he looked at his new armor. Why do your eyes know that way? Itri asked while looking at the blonde and his eyes, or rather their lack. Normally his eyes turn a white blue color when he uses his powers, but now I don't know what's wrong with him, I had never seen anything like that before, he said as he looked at the blonde. My eyes, what do my eyes have? Naruto asked confused since he could not feel anything strange in his eyes, in fact, it was quite the opposite now he could see clearer and better than before. Instead of answering Thor, he took a sword that was close to him and placed it on his face so that he could see its reflection in it. What the fuck, he said while putting his hands to his eyes. What the fuck is wrong with my eyes or rather where the hell are they, he asked, although his eyes had disappeared he was still looking good, in fact, he could see better than before. Don't you feel anything strange in your eyes boy, a nuisance, itching or something, Itri asked. Naruto shook his head, nothing I don't feel anything bad with my eyes, he said. Thor looked at Naruto for a second before speaking. Apparently the Stormbreaker not only allows you to control and release all your power, but also changes your appearance completely in the same way that the Mjolnir does. If that can be, since every time I used the Mjolnir I felt as if something was holding me back, but now, now I feel like all the power flows freely, he said while closing his eyes for a few seconds, when Naruto lived opening his eyes these were in their normal form and all the changes he had had disappeared completely. Looking at the big axe in his hands the blonde frowned a little. What's wrong Naruto something bothers you? Thor asked. It's not just that I feel it would be a bit awkward to always walk with her in my hands. Then why don't you use the transformation spell to transform into something else like I always do with the Mjolnir, see, said Thor while creating a magic circle and transforming the Mjolnir into a mahogany stick. Naruto hit his forehead for not thinking about it doing the same thing Thor did when he transformed his Stormbreaker into a collar and placed it around his neck. Well now that's much better, he told himself. Well now that this is resolved, get out of this place, Itri said as he turned to leave. Before the man could leave completely Naruto bowed to the, thank you very much for everything Itri-sama. The dwarf king just turned his head and gave a small growl before leaving completely, Thor placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder causing him to straighten. Congratulations Naruto likes you, he said while confusing the blonde. Itri is a little complicated man, if you would not have liked him at the same time that you called him a giant he would hit you right in the head with his great war mallet. Naruto paled a little, he had already received a couple of pats on the back from the man and almost broke his shoulder and back, he did not want to know what would have happened if he received a blow with the mallet of the man in his head. Well then I am grateful that that had not happened. Yes, you don't want that to happen, Thor said as he smiled. But putting that aside, it's time for us to return home Naruto, he said and Naruto nodded as he turned around and started walking to leave the place where they were. Ha and by the way Naruto. 
Thor said making the blonde look at him directly, happy birthday, he said with a smile on his face. Naruto smiled as he looked at the man, thank you, thank you very much, he said as a small tear ran down his cheek. Naruto was flying through the dark sky of the human world, from the first day that the floor the human world he fell in love with completely, while flying the blonde could not help comparing this world with the world where he came from, modernity, technology, people and even animals were all different from the world where he came from, even the air was better than his previous world. In this world there was no constant tension and fear that a war broke out as it was in their world, if it is true that humans had had two world wars, but that was already many years ago and the only war that could be seen was that of the three factions which had several years, it had read everything Asgard had about each one of the factions, his powers, abilities and weaknesses, as well as his leaders and sincerely he could not understand how they could still continue their war for so many years. And all because, because Lucifer and his 72 followers rebelled against God who as a punishment burned their white wings and sent them to the bottom of the earth and directly to the place currently known as hell, where they went from being angels to being demons, no long after the banishment of Lucifer and his people, many angels began to question the decision of their creator and began to commit sins, which caused him to banish them as well. That led to discontent for God spreading throughout the sky to such an extent that many of the angels began to move away from the teachings of their creator which in turn caused those angels to also be sent to hell, but unlike Lucifer and the first fallen they did not become demons but God made their beautiful white wings stain black so that all who saw them would know that they were no longer welcome in heaven. Those black-winged angels were known as fallen angels. The angels of sin and corruption, Beings as cursed as the demons and that like the demons they should be exterminated to eliminate all the evil in the world. For Naruto, it seemed like a great stupidity, to fight for so many years, to lose thousands of men and women just for an old resentment just for being expelled from heaven. Since he began to leave Asgard and know the human world he had had several encounters with members of all species who attacked him first, of course he defended himself from them and defeated them all easily but that only caused Odin to bother a little with him since according to the old god that could have been taken as a declaration of war from Asgard against the three main factions which could cause them to attack Asgard in retaliation. Of course, he had told Odin and everyone that the first member of one of the three factions to set foot in Asgard in a hostile manner would take care of frying him personally. But that was not enough to calm the father's wrath of everything, so as punishment the old man forbade him from stepping on the human world again without his permission. But as usual he never listened and did what he thought was best. While flying through the dark sky Naruto noticed something that caught his attention, descending a little he could see a redhead demon next to another female demon and with silver hair, both seemed to be exhausted and both were surrounded by fallen angels, all of whom had spears of light in their hands. Naruto looked at everything with his calm eyes, he could go down and help those demons fight the fallen angels, but if he did that he could end up getting Asgard into a problem with that faction, or he could also go his way and ignore everything he saw, he knew that this was the most logical option for him, but could he live with that, knowing he could help someone and did nothing. He did not know the demons, but he could see that they were not bad since the red-haired boy had stood in front of the silver-haired girl to protect her from the fallen angels. As he quickly descended Naruto cursed his hero complex which always made him want to save and help anyone he saw in danger. Everyone in Asgard told him that one day he would be killed and he knew it very well, but that was something that he didn't care about. Both the demons and the fallen angels were surprised when they saw a blonde teenager with an axe in his hand and flashing white eyes descend from the dark sky and stand in the middle of them all. They all stared at him without being able to identify him, they did not know who he was but they did know that he was neither an angel, nor a fallen and much less a demon. Naruto for his part looked at all the fallen angels before speaking. Good evening gentlemen, you think it would be possible for any of you to explain to me what is happening here? He asked as he looked at the black winged men. Who the hell are you? Are you one of those demon lovers? Asked one of the fallen angels while frowning. No I'm just a humble passer by that passed through the place and I stopped to see what happened that is all, he replied kindly. Then I suggest you continue with your path before you end up dead together with these dirty demons, another fallen angel said as he created a spear of light and aimed it at the blonde. 
Naruto looked at the man who spoke before looking at the demons behind him. Are you all right? I asked making them both nod. Hey you're listening to me, the fallen angel shouted, only to be ignored by Naruto who was still talking to the demons behind him. The man became completely angry at being ignored by the phenomenon in front of him, looking at his men he nodded. Naruto, although he was ignored the man he had not stopped seeing him from the corner of his eye, so when he saw how the man gave the silent order to be attacked he raised his axe to the sky doing so a lot of lightning they would fall on the three and form a shield which protected them from all the spears of light. All fallen angels took a step back when they saw this, they only knew one person who could do something like that. That was very impolite of you. Perhaps you do not know that it is cowardly to attack a person from behind or when he is talking to another, said the god of thunder as he turned to see the man who had given the attack order. You are Thor the god of thunder, said a fallen a little scared that the Nordic gods decided to join the war and side with the demons. Naruto shook his head as he slowly lowered his axe, no I'm not Thor. So, who are you? The man asked a little relieved that the blonde is not a Nordic god, he did not want to have to fight a man like Thor who was said to be the strongest of all the Nordic gods, he was supposedly as powerful as his leader Azazel. That does not matter now, the important thing is that I will give them a chance to retire and go home, he said as he looked the man. Directly in the eye, the fallen angel looked at Naruto with a smile on his face and before the blonde could do something he jumped back and created two spears of light in his hands. I don't know who you are. But if you want to protect the demons so much then why don't you die along with them, he said as he threw his spears at the blonde. Naruto sighed, because people never listen when someone speaks to him. Raising his axe he destroyed the first spear of light splitting it in half horizontally. After that he used one of his hands to take the other spear of light which surprised everyone. You shouldn't have done. That, he said before crushing the light spear in his hands. I gave them the opportunity to leave and they rejected it, now they will die, he said and before anyone could blink the angel who had attacked Naruto fell to the ground, dead, and without a head. Normally when someone's head is cut off the blood flies everywhere as if it were a volcano erupting, but in this case the Naruto cut was clean and surgical, the blonde had covered his stormbreaker with electricity by the time he made a cut this will heal quickly and so the blood does not splash it. Throwing his stormbreaker into the air he covered his hands with electricity before pointing them at the fallen. The rays that came out of Naruto's hands pierced the body of the angels just where their hearts were, giving him a quick and painless death. Turning the blonde was about to attack another fallen, but before that passed he was struck in the chest by a holy ray which sent him to roll on the ground. I admit it, that hurt a little, Naruto said as he stood up as if nothing had happened, but now it's my turn, jumping into the air he took his axe and aimed it at the sky. A lightning bolt fell from the sky and landed on the blonde thus giving him more power than he already had, moving his stormbreaker from left to right Naruto caused an electric sheet to leave it, the electric sheet sailed through the air and when it reached the ground everything but the two demons ended up dead and headless on the ground. Well, I'm done here so it's time to go, Naruto said after seeing that the only thing left of the fallen angels was a bunch of Black feathers. By the way because their bodies disappear when they are killed, asked the blonde to himself as he began to fly away. It will be because God created them so that when their bodies die they disappear and so humans do not find them and decide to experiment with their dead bodies, he kept talking to himself. Wait, Naruto stopped in the middle of his flight and his thoughts when he heard someone calling him, looking down he saw that the person who had called him was the red-haired demon. So he descended a little more to hear what that he wanted to tell her. I want to thank you for saving my life and that of Grafia San. My name is Sears X Gremory and she is Grafia Lucifag, he said as he leaned a little with the silver haired doing the same. It was nothing, Naruto said before turning to leave, but again he was stopped by the red haired boy. Wait, wait I would like to know at least the name of my savior and that of Grafia San, he said looking at the blonde. Naruto thought about it for a few seconds before descending completely and standing in front of the red-haired boy who in fact seemed to be the same age as him or at least in appearance as the demon slowly aged. Naruto, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. It's a pleasure Naruto-san, I'm completely grateful that you helped us, but I'd like to ask you something, you're a Nordic god, right? I ask and making Naruto's eyes narrow a little. 
As you knew, the blonde asked as he tightened his grip on his Stormbreaker. Only the Norse use that type of armor, in addition also your power is very similar to the Thunder God Thor. Sirzex said looking at the blonde with the axe in his hand. Of course it may also be that you are a descendant of Thor, after all lately there have been many humans who are descendants of Nordic gods and other different gods, he said as he looked the blonde up and down. But I doubt that this is. Your case, your power is too great for you to be a descendant of Thor, there is also the theory that you may be a bearer of sacred gear, that would explain your armor and your great power over the thunder element. Naruto stared at the redhead for a few seconds in silence, he is a very intelligent person, he discovered what I am with a simple look, thought as he looked at the smiling redhead. I see, but yes, you're right. I'm a Nordic, but I'm not a god. That is impossible, your power is too great not to be a god, said the woman as she opened her eyes a little. My power may be as great as that of a Nordic god, but that is all, he said as he looked at both of them with his flashing eyes. So if you'll excuse me, I have to go. Sirzex nodded as he looked at the blonde, it was nice to meet you Naruto-san and thanks again for helping us, I hope to see each other again one day, he said with a small smile on his face. As I said before, it was nothing, as soon as we saw each other again, that may have happened as it may not, Naruto said as he began to levitate and move away from both demons again. Naruto tried to enter as quietly as possible the castle which had become his home, he did not want anyone to find out especially Odin that he had gone on a trip to the human world again and without his permission since if the old man would discover it he could lock him in one of the many cells and prisons in Asgard. Sneaking out again, Naruto froze immediately when he recognized the voice of the person who had spoken. Turning the blonde smiled nervously as he scratched the back of his neck. He he he, I think you got me Thor, he said as he looked at the blonde first god of thunder. You know you are forbidden to leave Asgard without Naruto's permission, he said as he looked at the blonde severely. I just went for a little walk, Asgard is an amazing place and everything but I wanted to travel around the human world a little and see how much had changed since the last time that is all. Naruto said as he looked at the older blonde, he really loved to Asgard but he could not spend all his time locked in him, he had to stretch his legs and get to know the world a little. There was also the fact that since he got the Stormbreaker he had not been able to find anyone to fight apart from Thor and a few warriors since nobody wanted to face him and that was boring him a little. Being here all the time is a bit boring, not to mention that we don't have cable television yet, he tried to joke a little. Thor looked at the blonde before approaching him and placing a hand on his shoulder. I understand you Naruto believe me, but you can't go out that way by yourself, he said making Naruto lower his head a little. Next time I will accompany you to learn how to escape from here without being discovered entering or leaving, he said causing Naruto to open his eyes and raise his head quickly. Really? asked the blonde a little astonished by what the man said. Thor nodded as he looked around. I was also a young Naruto adventurer, and like you I wanted to see the world and face strong opponents, but over time I understood that my place was here in Asgard, especially when the three factions war broke out. But that it does not mean that I still do not sneak at night as you do, so I will teach you how to do it without anyone or Odin or Heimdall noticing, he said as he looked back at the blonde, placing his arm around the blonde's shoulder he started walking with the blonde. Now come on I want you to tell me everything you've been doing, Naruto nodded with a smile on his face as he let his companion god guide him. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.